delay her. Um, so Elaine, we've got you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. We will open the um, November 14th meeting of Milton's Master Plan Implementation Committee. Um, for Warren's sake, we will go around and do a set of introductions. So uh, Warren, I'm the chair, as you know, you've heard from me. Uh, Dick? Uh, my name is Dick Burrick. I'm an appointed member, and I was a, originally a member of the Master Plan Committee and uh, I've been very lucky to be part of this implementation committee. Tabor? Tabor Keeley. I also was a member of the uh, original master plan committee. And uh, by day, I'm a commercial real estate broker and, and do, uh, I'm on the, uh, the Ponce River Watershed and the uh, and, uh, Metropolitan Area Planning Council also. So that's my connection to uh, this committee. Wendy Lane? Hi, Elaine. Um, I am an appointed member and also serve as town meeting member and personnel board. And by day, I also work for a real estate uh, company. And Regina. Hi, Warren. I'm Regina Campbell Malone. I'm by day, a school teacher and um, resident of Milton. And I'm only one meeting ahead of you. So I hope, hope you feel okay. <laughs> and Josh. Sorry, I was just admitting uh, Roxanne to the meeting. Uh, Josh Lee, the assistant town planner and the uh, staff person for the Master Plan Implementation Committee. It looks like Roxanne's just in time with the last of the introductions. Roxanne? Thank you. Thank you, Roxanne Musto, member from the select board on the committee. Thank you. And one thing I didn't mention, Warren, is I'm the representative from the planning board. And an architect by day. Okay, um, we're gonna jump right into the agenda. Um, our next meeting dates are December 12th. Uh, actually, look, before we do that, um, I'm just gonna say that Warren um, was uh, voted to be appointed both by the select board and the planning board, but hasn't officially received his notification and therefore hasn't been sworn in yet. So we will treat him as member elect um, tonight. How's that? Okay, great. So um, as I was starting to say, our next meeting dates are December 12th and January 16th. And uh, anyone have a problem with those dates? Nope. We will continue to hold seven o'clock unless anyone has a, a special um, request. Um, Next, we'll move on to our meeting minutes. Again, thank you, Josh, for keeping us um, right up to speed. Um, um, one, one second, Cheryl. Did you mm -hmm. say January 16th? Yes. That's that Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Okay, well, we won't hold it that day, will we? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's the, the, the next? I don't know why I didn't see that on my calendar for some reason when I looked at the date. Um, we always just go by taking the third one but it's all over my calendar. Okay, so how about uh, we either make it the 9th or the 23rd? This, um, is there any preference? We will have gone a bit since December, but it's holiday season. How about January 23rd? Not with me. Okay. okay. Thank you, Regina. I keep, I don't want to be caught keep in doing that. I scheduled for uh, Juneteenth. So that was a problem as well. So thank you. All right. And I admit to my mistake. So um, now we have our meeting minutes of October 26th that Josh circulated. Does anybody have any, or has everyone had a chance to look at them? And then if so, does anyone have any amendments to them? to propose. If not, then I will take a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of October 26th. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have to do a roll call vote. All those in favor, Dick? Yes. Tabor? Uh, abstain. Elaine? I wasn't there. Okay, Elaine? Roxanne? Yes. And myself? Yes. You forgot me. Who did I forget? Regina, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm a yes. 
in your yes. All right, I'm still getting used to this larger group. Sorry about that. All right, now we're welcoming um, our new member, Warren. Um, and I, what I want to do though is jump to number four because um, uh, Chris Hodland, the member of the library trustees, uh, stepped away from the trustees meeting to be with us tonight. As um, the ones of you who have been on the committee for a while will recall that uh, we have had conversations at past meetings with the library trustees and with Will Enzak, the director of the library, about um, the library's um, programming and the popularity of the library and its programming and the limitations of what they can offer due to parking challenges that they have. And um, when we were, as the master plan um, has a whole section about uh, the town center and making improvements at the town center, we were engaged with the consultant MAPC, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council, at the time that the fire station building committee was advancing the design for the uh, headquarters project. And part of that was to look at what the uh, parking impacts were going to be from the location of that fire station, and then whether um, parking overall and uh, connections between the various municipal uses could be improved. So in that context, we've had conversations with how town, the town center area and town of property can be uh, utilized or potentially utilized to help the library with its parking needs. Um, so that brings us to what we had been looking at most recently was, is there land available next to the library to add some parking? And that land has basically been ruled out due to wetlands. Um, so that leaves two other locations that we've discussed. One of them is the area around Town Hall. However, due to the construction project right now, there's lots of vehicles related to the construction. So it's a little, there's definitely not adequate parking for Town Hall users, much less adding library users there, at least for the next couple of years. And the other place that we talked about was across Canton Ave from Town Hall, from the Town Green there, uh, town owned property next to the police station. And you'll recall that we talked about a next step to advancing that discussion would be some further due diligence. Um, and that due diligence um, would include studying, well, part of the use of town, the town hall side of the property would be crossing Canton Ave, which is a safety uh, concern uh, due to, um, actually a safety concern for everyone, but in particular due to the population the library serves the most, which is young families and elder residents. And Chris can go into that a little further. Um, and so there was some discussion about how to improve that connection, but other connections like from the Council on Aging to Town Hall to the library, et cetera. Um, but then, um, so that's some engineering work to, to analyze whether crosswalks could be added safely there and if that would improve safety. And then the other would be could parking and some potentially a building over parking um, be achieved on town owned land there. So the next step of that is getting a survey to see where the wet, mapping where the wetlands are, putting it on the plan and then getting topographic and tree information to understand what the impacts would be if that were done. And so um, we're, we've been talking about whether the master plan implementation committee can work with the library and the planning department on further studies of that. And so uh, we have a proposal that I circulated to you um, that um, we can discuss in a little bit more detail. The other thing I'll, I'll mention is that Chris and I participated in a meeting with the select board chair, um, Arthur Doyle, uh, Town Administrator Nick Milano and the Director of Planning, Tim Zerwinski, and talked about a next step beyond the survey, which would be a parking utilization analysis. And it really wouldn't be just based on what's being done now, because as I mentioned, the library doesn't have capacity for all the programming, so it would be future looking. And then also um, basically interview and question process with uh, the town hall and, and the um, adjacent users, the churches, 
and their daycare centers about what needs they have. And so that would be sort of a phase two analysis that would come after this. So that long introduction, I'm going to ask Chris if she would like to make some comments before we open up for further discussion. Um, I don't really have any need to add details, but just to let you all know, at least the new people on here that we've been trying to look for some parking solutions for the library for several, several years and um, had started work with this group um, a year and a half ago. Actually, we started with Tim and Marina. Um, and so we are really hoping that we can push forward this survey um, to see if that Canton Avenue property is a potential solution at all um, for us, and then hopefully get the parking um, analysis done as well so that we can begin to figure out if we have any solutions or do we need to look for something else? So just looking for your support in that. So one thing that the, again, for the new members, the committee has done is use the funds that we've been appropriated by town meeting to advance studies. We've done that in Milton Village and East Milton and here at town center. And um, you'll see in that proposal, if you take all of the um, components of that proposal, it's about $20,000. And I'd, I'd like to suggest that we continue to assist with advancing this planning. Uh, the library trustees have indicated that they may have some resources uh, to apply towards this as well. And so uh, Chris and I uh, spoke earlier, she's going to approach the trustees about doing a split with this. So I'd like to suggest that uh, the that we recommend use of ten thousand dollars worth of our remaining twenty thousand of the total thirty that we had allocated for this fiscal year. So that would be ten thousand towards this effort, leaving ten thousand uh, for any other initiative that we'd like to see done in the next. Basically, it would have to be done in the next seven months or eight months at the end of fiscal year's end of June. So, um, and the, the phase two piece will be probably at least as much, if not more than this piece. And whether we seek to use some of that funding for this or other purposes will come in another discussion. So uh, questions and discussion on this? I had a question about the, uh, the scope of the work and then maybe it's just, because that's part of the property that's owned by the town, but it does detail the land going right up next to the library on Reedsdale. But it, I, thought, I thought we had already discussed this, that, that because of the wetlands over there that we weren't gonna be studying that. Is that just because it happens to be the same property and that's why it's included in the study? Yes, I think the focus is not gonna be that part, any of that part that's wetlands. So there's, I'll, I'll pull this, the proposal up. Oh, um, Josh, can you enable screen sharing, please, so I can pull up, or can you pull the proposal up? Actually, do both. <laughs> I'll do both. Uh, Thank you. you. you Thank you, Josh. So can you just forward to the plan? I think there was confusing because they have two plans, one that shows the whole property and the second one, which shows the rectangular piece that we talked about before. Is this the most recent one? I don't know that you've got the most recent one there, Josh. Here, can you stop your screen share? Uh, the the outdated one, Cheryl, and uh, my apologies. Yeah, do you have it handy or do you want me to do that? Um, those were the two I had prepared. Okay. I don't have a, a newer one. All right, let me get to it then. How's that? All right, uh, a second here. Can you see that Bowler contract amendment, folks? Okay. So this is the boundary topographic and utility survey piece. So this is the flagging of the wetlands, the wetland delineation. And then this is uh, conceptual sketch plans to get an idea of what would fit. That would be very conceptual. And the plan, this is, I think, what's confusing, um, Tabor. So we didn't. Right, that's where it says limited work. work. Right. But my understanding that is that this, this is the, the surveyor's requested for this piece. So it may be that they're flagging wetlands throughout, but that this would be the focus of the survey. 
that's something I think that Josh and Tim can clarify. Mm -hmm. If they're yeah, going to be flagging all the confirm. way down to Reedsdale, then they ought to be doing behind the library too, just to see. I mean, if you can grab eight spaces, ten spaces, that will be great. But I think if they're not, if it's not part of the scope of work, then they shouldn't be doing any of it. It seems. Uh, I'll just keeping where the dark red shaded area. I think they have a survey of this portion of the library property here already. Um, and from what I recall and seeing that this is all wet here, I don't think we really need the survey of this unless um, for some reason Tim and Josh think that we do. But the focus, I understand, is this red rectangle. Yeah, that's, that's the focus from the Bowler survey. Yeah. Um, what I was showing earlier was maybe jump of the gun. That was the, the beta um, analysis, and, and that sort of incorporated a slightly broader um, Right, so Josh circulated the two beta proposals. That's what we're, those are going to be. Um, well, the idea was that those the scope of those two would be revised given the construction around town hall right now. So uh, we would be looking at a at revised proposals at an upcoming meeting. So those are can you can look at those as background. But for tonight, we're focused on this one. Um, so the blue is the wetlands, and that's why it didn't seem reasonable to maybe they have to flag it and get it on the drawing just because it's a contiguous wetland. I'm not sure the requirements for that. But the focus of what we wanted to look at was here where the um, crosshatch is. Cheryl, how many, how many parking spots are we looking to gain for this process? Well, I, I think that needs to come in the next phase in terms of what are the actual needs. There'll be That will be tested against what would fit, right? So it's really um, right now kind of due diligence stick before we know whether there's any uh, capacity here. The library has said, and Chris, if you want to jump in, that you're you're limited in what you can do programming wise um, based on the capacity of the current park. And do you want to talk about that a little bit more? Sure. Yep. Um, so we did um, provide some information to the MPIC last year. Um, on our requirements. Um, and we're looking to gain at least 40 spaces right now. We could use 40 spaces right now. Um, and looking out in the future, we'd actually like to have more like 50 or 60. Um, there's many times, mostly in the mornings, like 9.30 to 12, um, 2.30 to 3.30, and then in the evenings when we have um, outside users of the library um, using our space. Um, where the parking is a problem. We are limited, we cannot offer more programs because of the parking limitation. So um, that's why we're looking for, for the other space. So we, we are hoping, if it possible, that this, this land might be able to provide, you know, some, um, something towards that 40 if we can. So, um, but so, we don't know if it can do any at all at this point, so. Yeah, some of what we talked about before with, um, with Tim Zawinski was that, you know, town-owned parcels are limited and there's, you know, uh, competition for use of the parcels. And so um, whether it makes sense to have land that's dedicated purely to parking or whether there could be some um, other use of the land in, in addition to parking. So one of the ideas is that this could would be shared parking, not just for the library, but for town center users. Um, and that was where the parking utilization and parking needs analysis comes in. And then the other piece is whether there could be some other use above it, either initially or later, a municipal use or affordable housing or some other um, benefit that would help the, the tie all of town center together. And so that there would be something um, more beneficial than just parking for the property. And that's again, where this this, this piece of it is the beginning of due diligence. There would need to be a lot more analysis done to see whether any of that makes sense. But, you know, understanding what might be buildable here is, uh, was deemed the first step. Right, I'm not, I'm not questioning the need. I'm just trying to get a sense of an under a best case scenario, how many parking spots could, we, could be generated out of that parcel? And then the follow-up question would be, how much would it cost and how, how would we pay, how would the town pay for it? Yeah, so, you know, it's one of those interesting things. If, let's just say, you know, the master plan mentions 
uh, whether there would be some amenity needed or added to town center with that, whether that would be desirable, if, let's say a coffee shop or a sandwich shop or something like that, or if it were a uh, housing, you know, would, there's oftentimes a public private partnership where you, the, um, uh, the provision of a municipal asset, you know, in some conjunction, they, you, they basically build the parking uh, there's uh, the financial terms of that get worked out so it's beneficial to the town uh, because it's you know the town actually owns the land so the um, what that might look like down the road it, you know is, is something that would have to be analyzed whether it would just be something that would be sort of a capital bond kind of thing I, it's not something we've really talked about Dick but you know the um, certainly that would need to be analyzed Okay, we, we can we can put that that part of it on hold. I'm just wondering mm -hmm. if everything comes in and is determined that what lands do, do not affect the development of that piece of property. And we were talking about parking as the primary need of the library. How many parking spots potentially could be on that piece of property? We don't really know until we see where the wetlands are. The, no, no. I, 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 so just 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 for a, just for a discussion sake. Assume that wetlands have nothing to do with it. That, that piece of property, I'm trying to get a sense of how big that piece of property is. All right, hold on a many, second. How many potential yeah. parking spots could could we be uh, generated out of that out of that spot? Assuming that there's, just for the time being, the wetlands are not going to be an impediment to the development of that. 20, 30? Yeah, give me one second. I looked at that. Um... Uh, I think it's probably at least 40 on one level. And uh, when we talked about this before, and I think I showed a section, you know, the land slopes down. So you could, you could come and the land sloping in two directions. So you could come in at one level potentially this is where you need the, the survey because you need to analyze this. But if you look at it just flat, like it's all a piece of flat land, not accounting for where all the trees are and where the wetlands are. Right. And how, it depends how long it goes, you know, but what we were looking at before was potentially 40 or one level. Okay, so, all right. Thank you, that's what I needed. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments, folks? I have a quick question, um, and I know this is beyond the scope of this work, um, but uh, who is the abutter that is, what is that, south on Leapdale Road? It looks like it's 100. Is that DPW or is that? Is on Reedsdale is the hospital. Oh, is that right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And the, um, I think, Chris, you reached out to the hospital about the potential use of their property and that wasn't very encouraging yep yeah we have spoken to the um to the hospital about sh either sharing some parking that they have or allowing us to build some parking on their property and somehow making that available to us and um it's not something that they're able to or amenable to doing um mm -hmm. right now so one is they have their own parking needs that are pretty dramatic they have um, a lot of their employees actually park down the street at the church and are bused to the hospital um, for work and back home. And um, they're they're not willing at this point to allow any other land for any development by us because they may need some expansion um, room themselves in the future. So, but we did pursue that. Um, has any thought been given to Busing during peak hours of usage or below grade parking under the existing parking lot of the library? For busing of employees or busing of? Of, of uh, patrons. So during peak hours of, of service, the library, they could possibly be bused from another location in Milton or you know, below grade parking at, on the existing library parking lot? We, we have not pursued that. Um, I mean, one of the bigger users of the library every morning are families 
young, um, young families with little kids and carriages, many more than one child. I'm not sure how amenable they would be to coming out of their car with their strollers and back into a vehicle with their strollers and their children and out to go to an event. Um, I don't think that would be a really solution. As far as going under, I'm sure any of you are much more qualified than, than I am for that, but we had to build a huge, huge retaining wall even to put the existing parking lot in place. So I don't know that anything underneath is, is a viable option, so. Uh, Roxanne? Uh, thank you. What is the timetable, Cheryl, <clears throat> excuse me, of getting this survey done? Um, and on the bigger end of looking at all of the different areas, uh, I know this one's specific to that particular lot, but I'm thinking also for the whole thing again. Um, how are we going to account for, you know, the construction and patrons to town hall and, and all of that to get really accurate data? Yeah, one of the things that we talked about was um, the fire station is actually not expanding in terms of uh, staffing. So, and there's dedicated parking for firefighters in this new proposal. And so the other piece, so that that would be a, um, a known number in terms of how many parking spaces they need. And then the other is the uh, number of staff at town hall and the parking needs of staff is a known number because staff is not changing. Um, and then the daycare centers that operate, well, actually another big user during the mornings, which is a, uh, potential uh, overlap of uh, what the library users is the building department is the busiest because they're open to drop in uh, starting at 8 a.m. I think maybe until 10. Um, but then we could also find out uh, by interviewing department heads and others at town hall um, what the maximum what their uh, schedules are when they receive the most people visiting so you could get a sense of visitors to town hall. And then um, the daycare centers um, also, they, uh, their peak periods are uh, drop off and pick up. And there's some overlap in the use of drive access for that. And that's some discussions that um, planning department had with them in the past and that would happen again. So while there may be, um, and we, maybe we won't be going back to in-person meetings fully like we were before, but there is a capacity at all of the meeting rooms are used at night, like pre-COVID when every uh, meeting room at town hall was in use and possibly even the, the, the meeting community room at the library and the, at the room at the Council on Aging. Um, so we know what the capacity of those rooms are, so we could design for maximum capacity, at least in terms of you know, what uh, all of these buildings uh, can accommodate people-wise and then assign parking to that. It won't be exactly the utilization, but it, you know, it'll get us at least a pretty good distance. At least that's the discussion that we had and that Tim was going to go back to beta, the consultants and talk to them about that approach. Yeah, and, and Tim has, has gone back to them. We don't have that revised scope, but planning department's also been looking at, uh, you know, pre pre COVID what, the sort of proportion of uh, things uh, and mornings that um, we had at least two of the three meeting rooms in town hall in use to see how often uh, we were sort of seeing that that full capacity at town center um, parking. So so that that work is is also ongoing um, within the department, not just from potential consultants. The other piece we talked about was the concerts at the gazebo. You know, that's a different use and it you um, the children that you know like to run around the gazebo when music's can play being played um, and just like there's parking spaces up front so you wouldn't have and the access is up front there so it is a little uh, bit of a safety factor to think about adding more parking there um, so that that was something to talk about and a consideration as well. And one thing, other thing I want to mention just about the, um, the town center, and it's really not focused on parking, but connections. When we did this work with MAPC pre-COVID, we did do one forum with youth, and we had participants from uh, the middle school and the high school, and they they spoke about how they um, after school how they go to the library or they go to um, they need a place to, well, some of them said we're not all in sports, and so it's nice to have a place that we can go and hang out also, 
you know, there is the wildcat den that's targeted for the middle school and they're still really not anything comparable for the high school. But they did talk about wanting to have some seating in that green space, in the park space that's next to the fire station and have, um, you know, having a place to pick up a snack after school was advantageous, would have been nice to them, they said as well. So we have notes from those meetings if anyone's interested, but we could talk about that as we think a little bit further about planning in town center. I mean, I really like the idea of seeing what's possible on that site and, you know, can we develop there? Can we put parking there? You know, I think it's worthwhile. There's, I mean, so many things in that prime location. I mean, you have so many people that, that go there on a daily basis from like the library, the police department, and you've got the hospital nearby. And, you know, if you put even a small commercial, like if you had a coffee shop there, you know, I think it would do really well. Or um, increased parking wouldn't just be utilized by the library, but you have, like you said, programming at the gazebo. Um, so I think it would just be really good to know like what we're working with and what the possibilities are. Actually, I'm gonna mention one other thing is that, um, we received an email through Allison, um, and it might be two years ago now, but I, I rediscovered it again. It was someone who was interested um, in this, the potential of town center as really a, a town center since it is, you know, like the master plan identified. Milton lacks sort of a downtown. It has these pockets of commercial, and then it has this municipal center, but it's not really um, kind of a downtown as most towns might have. But um, the connection between, um, you know, police and youth was identified as this, uh, this person who wrote in and having a better connection um, or more welcoming maybe connection to the, uh, the police headquarters was something that was thought to be something to be thought about. And so, um, so that's something, again, it's not really the scope of work for this piece of it, but this is just one piece you know, of what's potentially, you know, more analysis and study. And if you, if you look back at those recommendations in the master plan related to some of this, um, you know, it's not just about fulfilling the needs of one particular thing. But the idea is that this, this parcel would need to be uh, multi-purpose, right? And, and it would, uh, part of it would help serve the library, which is really serving as a community center. And I think, um, that's I, something that was in the master plan too, is to help support the library in, in continuing its effort to serve as a community center. I think one thing we need to also remember is that and I think, Cheryl, you're gonna do a town meeting presentation about what we do. So a lot of this has to go back to the public for very, even if it's just a town meeting, but it's going to, or as a report card and, and it's gotta be defensible. It has to be, it has to show that we've examined even things that are remotely possible, not just the low hanging fruit of the obvious ones. Um, and I think this is a, a good example of that. Uh, but going back to you know, Chris's really uh, real issue for being here is to, you know, getting this parking for the library programs. I'm wondering how, you know, her mentioning the, uh, moms with strollers and kids not wanting to be getting on a bus, but thinking about parking it next to the police station and walking on a paved path behind the, uh, you know, the neighboring properties to the uh, library or up over the hill on the sidewalk, one or the other, it's a, it's a long haul. And so you can imagine that every single mother is going to drive through the parking lot and see if there's a parking space first and then pull out, try to take a left in the you know, fairly busy commuter traffic in the morning and pull into the next parking lot down. And I'm, I'm just wondering how practical that will be and it, what, what's your sales pitch on this if, it, if in fact it's feasible, but maybe not practical. I'm just, I think that it's something we don't need to consider you know, that option. Yeah, I think Chris has talked about staff parking. Uh, I think anywhere from 12 to 15 to 18 uh, staff members who could either be parking here or at town center if town center had space available. So to free up spaces in the lot right next to the library. But Chris, I don't know if you have any other thoughts about that. Uh, you're Sorry, muted, you're Chris. muted still. Sorry. Um, no, those are uh, very good points, Tabor, but um, we haven't really gone that route. I mean, it, you know, the, the traffic is an issue 
turning out of the library to the left is still an issue. Turning into the library, taking a, a right is an issue because even those parking spaces that were put alongside the road that have X's, I don't know how many of you, but I've gone to turn in and a car has come down that road and almost hit me. And that used to happen a lot more. So those little cross marks on, this, on the street don't really stop that. So um, I don't know, I don't have a solution for that or a marketing play, um, but I do know that crossing the street with strollers and children and, and adults in the evening is, an, is not a great option either. So um, I wish we had a new, a new place to put a library with a whole town center and all of it in the room or or I wish the people in the yellow house would sell their house to us <laughs> or give it to us better than that but um so okay um any other questions or comments thoughts I I will say um Krista I, I completely understand what you're saying about hauling kids and strollers and all that all that jazz um, I've done it with skis uh, at Blue Hills when we can't get parking right at the immediate parking lot. And it, mm -hmm. it definitely is, is a challenge. It's one that obviously if you're there for ski lessons, you don't have any other options. <laughs> right. You, yeah. um, uh, and so, so perhaps that's something to consider too, is that if the option is to tank the trip to the library or walk, uh, walk a block, um, down the street to to this the the red square area um, that might be something that's preferable. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the considerations that we're having out on the town level is that um, because of the hill uh, that Cam Nav is is on, it, it makes um, mm -hmm. sorry uh, the uh, pedestrian crossing. Um, a, a, particularly sort of blind spot as people are coming over the hill. So if 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 a parking solution can be found on the same side as the library, that'll that'll help um, minimize any sort of uh, pedestrian danger. Um, though we're, we're still sort of interested in seeing what we can do for pedestrian crossings anyway, because that is a, an important part of that connectivity. That'll be part of the due diligence too. If some beta can do that in engineering analysis of whether a, a crosswalk can safely be added, but that'll come in the next phase. All right, so what do we think about the suggestion that I made of, um, well, let me just do a reminder. Um, we generally um, make our recommendations and they're sent to the select board and the planning board um, for support in terms of use of these funds. Um, so if we would like to make that recommendation or if we have other questions and not ready to do that, um, I'd like to be able to move to our next agenda item. So if we can have some sense, oh yes, Chris. Um, can I just ask if you could clarify the amount? So I thought what the amount was 25,500. Okay, so let me I... go back to the proposal because I just used something from my memory. I, th I think it went up with this revised edition. Okay. So. All right, I have lots of files open. Give me one second. Go back to, this isn't it, but. Sorry, one sec here. Uh, the final number, I think, from Bowler comes out to $25,450, uh, at least as of um, okay, so, November 9th. Sorry, I didn't do the math. So what's the math of half of that? Um, that would be, uh, oh, God. You muted yourself, Josh. I didn't want you to hear me doing uh, underwhelming mental math. <laughs> All right. So, what did you say the total was? Twenty five thousand and four fifty divided by two is uh, twelve seven twenty five. All right. Yeah.
Okay. Um, my initial suggestion of 10 was really with the thought of having it be 50% from MPIC and 50% from the library. What we're looking for with the phase two is to have the select board or uh, have a three-way split if possible. We have to see what those what that fee proposal looks like and further discussions. But on this one, I um, uh, with the interest in moving this forward, um, I'd like to suggest that we we consider that amount. Dick. Carol, what happens if the library is unsuccessful in coming up with their 12725? Well, I think um, well, we don't have 25,000. And I think this is really something that um, should involve a larger group, whether that's the select board or others that we, we could look to um, see if we can't get contribution to. This isn't, um, I, I just wanted to keep, at least my suggestion was to keep some funds available for any other piece that comes out of our finishing this review of the goals and what else we might like to see advanced in the next eight months. Um, but if others think differently, then I'm open to suggestions. Well, I didn't mean that. I, what I'm trying trying to figure out is that is this a matching? Um, are we offering a matching gift to or a, or a portion of the cost, depending upon the library or the town or someone else coming up with the remainder of the money to to go forward with the project? I don't think you know half the money is going to get get us much in terms of a report. Right, no, it would be, the thought would be to try and get this work done. Chris, you have your hands up too, so maybe you can mm -hmm. fill in here. I, I was just gonna say, Dick, I, I can't speak for the whole board, but I would find it extremely unlikely that the board wouldn't support and pay for half of this. Um, like I said, we've been trying to push this forward for a long, long time, and this would be hopefully some real movement finally towards that end, so. Um, that doesn't really answer your question, except that I think it's pretty likely that we would be able to fund the other half. Well, that's, that's a good enough answer, Chris. I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot here, but I'm just trying to yeah. think that, you know, going through this exercise of how much money and why we're doing and things like that is really contingent upon someone else coming up with a equal portion of the total cost, right? So yeah. <laughs> to say that we're going to recommend, we're gonna go 12, 725 without the match, doing half the project is not gonna get us where we need to go, right? So yeah. I hate to put it on you, Chris, but I think that's, you know, that's, that's where, uh, and when do you think you would find out about the willingness of the board to go forward with, with that? Part I'm, ho I'm hoping to go back to the trustee meeting, right now. which is across the hall. <laughs> it started at seven and I did right, right. it. So I hope to get a vote shortly. I can well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go then. That's <laughs> I'll text Cheryl if that happens. <laughs> All right, okay. All right, so do we have some consensus that we think this is something we'd like to support in use of our funds, folks? Do you need a motion? I need a motion if we have consensus, yes. I'll make a motion that we do this contingent upon them coming up with the other half. And obviously, Bowler's not going to do it for half anyway. So I think that's sort of an unwritten truth. But uh, I think this is something we've been working on for a very long time. And I'd like to you know, clear the decks and get 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 this started. And and uh, if it's going to start, we got to we got to begin with this. So that it makes the most sense to uh, before Bowler and everybody else raises their prices. Uh, let's get it done and, and lock it in. Okay, so Tabor, will you include in that's your a motion that's to the amount uh, of twelve thousand? The fifty, the, yeah, the the fifty percent of that cost that uh, Josh had brought up, which is twelve seven twenty five, I believe, mm -hmm. um, and that uh, we offer that up to the library to uh, you know for them to bring up a, a matching amount. Okay, do I have a second? I'll second it. Any further discussion? Okay, we'll do a roll call vote. Tabor? Aye. 
Dick? Yes. Elaine? Elaine, sorry, I didn't hear you. Yes. Roxanne? Yes. Regina? Yes. And Cheryl, yes. All right, Chris, I'll be looking for your text message. Thank you. Thank you all. I appreciate it. So good luck, Chris. Thank you. All right. Let's move on. We welcomed you, uh, Warren, and you jumped right into a, a detailed discussion, which has some history, and not everybody here has been involved in it. Um, but it, uh, if, if we need more time at a upcoming meeting to go over some of any of the town center discussion, we can just let me know if you'd like to do that, okay? Um, because we do have some work that uh, MAPC did. I, I mentioned a plan and I can show you some of that work if you'd like to see it. I'm happy to do it offline too if, with individuals if you'd like to do that. Um, so the brief overview of the master plan, um, <laughs> we did this uh, for Regina and we'll do a quick one for you, Lauren, which is, you know, there's, um, it was done in 2013 and 14. Uh, Dick and Tabor mentioned they were on the original committee as was I, um, that was before I was on the planning board. Um, the planning board adopted that plan in 2015 and then town meeting, um, well, a big part of, and you probably saw it if you looked through all of the recommendations, was to have an implementation committee so that the implementation of the plan would have a, somebody looking out for it, if you would, if you will, that it wouldn't just go sit on a shelf and uh, not be looked at. The last time the plan had been updated before that was in the 1970s. And so it was a pretty big effort uh, at that time. There was three volumes, there's lots of information, lots of data. Uh, but our work is really focused on the implementation, which is in volume one. And there's seven goals outlined there with over 100 implementation strategies. And we've been working our way through all those strategies in that spreadsheet. And yay to everyone who's been putting in the time on that and doing the follow-up work on that. Um, our new members jumped in and got themselves up to speed. So that's been great. Um, so again, um, off to Regina and to Warren, I'm happy to give any of my institutional background knowledge to you. And if you, uh, we can't do it as a group outside of these meetings as open meeting law, but we can do it at one of these meetings or individual if you'd like. So um, any questions about that? But oh, just one other thing I'll mention is we have, um, successfully requested funds from, you know, from uh, the warrant committee and supported at town meeting. Uh, some years it's been 50,000, some years, the last few years it was cut back to 30, just with budget considerations and other priorities for the town. But at least we've been very pleased that the town meeting has agreed that uh, it's some of the implementation requires resources. And our, our resources are really on the planning side, but those have been leveraged. The planning department's been great in, in getting grant monies and sometimes they need a matching fund. And so we've been able to provide that. That's where $10,000 of the current year budget is going towards East Milton Square zoning effort. And they leverage that 10,000 to get another, what, 40,000, Josh? Yep. Uh, so that's that's gotten us a total of fifty thousand um, from you all and and the state to to put the sort of vision that was developed um, in in the visioning process into actual zoning language. Um, and an RFP for that is is just about to go out. We're able to use funds to advance the bicycle and pedestrian master plan to advance planning at Milton Landing. Uh, which is now that work is being implemented implemented through a committee of the select board. And we were able to get overlay zoning uh, done there. Uh, and through we had parking and traffic studies done using those funds. And so um, we were able to make, make really good progress in some areas. And I'm sure there's some areas we think that we haven't made a lot. Um, but the funding is important. So that's another budget item. And I'm just going to... Um, all right, let me see. I'm looking at all of our lists on the agenda. 
the 10 year duration. The reason this is on our radar screen now is it's two years before our 10 year mark. However, um, if we, we think about the funding cycles, they're, they're, you have to think and plan a little bit ahead. So I've been asked to, for us to think a little bit ahead and not wait to the last minute. Arthur Doyle, who used to be the select board representative, has was always an advocate of thinking further ahead and trying to get a, don't wait until the end of the 10 year mark to, the, to make these kinds of decisions. And so he's actually asked me to attend their meeting. So your meeting tomorrow night, Roxanne, uh, to talk a little bit about this. Um, because we've had some other things pop up on the agenda, you know, we aren't quite as far with our discussions about where we, whether we think the master plan should be updated. Uh, I have an opinion about that and we're, uh, we can save that for the end. Uh, we have two more goals to discuss. And uh, the discussion of the budget is really tied to that as well. So what I'd like to say is if we go to our tracking sheet for goals six and seven, and then we'll come back to those other items on the agenda. All right, so does that make sense for everyone? All right, so Josh, would you like to screen share? Or would you like me to on the spreadsheet? Um, if you could just, I, I'm only working on one screen and uh, no, no, I need to I use half of it for uh, your minutes. Okay. And you do such a great job with our minutes. I'm not going to take that away from you. That's for sure. All right. I'm working on a laptop. So it's just, it's a little bit, just give me a second to get where you are on my screen organized here. All right. Everyone see the, the sheet? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, I, I, I see now. All right, so here's this tracking sheet, as we know, has the goal, which is no, now we're on number six, and then the strategies, which are all numbered, whether what priority it was assigned at the time, whether it was considered low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit was really something thought to not require a lot of resources, whether personnel or funding. The uh, MPIC leader is really the person who's following up on the status of it. The lead party is who is supposed to take the lead initiative in implementing that strategy. And there's partners identified. And then we've assigned whether that strategy has been started, whether it's halfway met or whether it's fully met. And then we've been putting notes here on the side what I did um, today was start to highlight yellow being where we have pulses all the way across, which means we've made no progress. We, we want to see if that we think that's really the case. And then the green ones are where it's true all the way across, where mm -hmm. we've made great progress. Um, and then the others are in between for now. But so that's why the colors are there. Um, so this particular goal six is to provide high quality public facility services and infrastructure. So I'm going to go to each of you, us who is assigned to this one and just at least talk about what you've, what you've learned, what you've sort of included, which is a lot of detail here, Elaine, thank you. And uh, where, and, you, and you've identified that you think this, is, this goal has been met or this strategy has been met. Yeah, so sorry, I'm also jumping between screens here. Mm -hmm. um, so repair and renovate town administrative offices as needed. Um, to me, it seems as though that that's what they're doing. Um, the director of consolidated facilities oversees the maintenance of the town offices and he designs, plans, and completes projects that are under $25,000, depending on uh, what funds are available. And then the projects that are over the 25,000 threshold are submitted to the capital planning committee. Um, and then some current projects that they're working on are new chiller. I mean, these go out all the way at least till um, fiscal year 2028, but they have plans for um, all sorts of different projects, such as I mentioned, the new chiller, new water bubblers, um, exterior window improvements and things like that. So it really does seem like uh, this goal, in, in my opinion, is being met um, 
to the best of their ability with the funds available. Okay. You want to go to 6.1.2 then? So ensuring that school buildings continue to be well maintained. Um, similarly, repair requests are submitted to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee yearly. Upcoming proposed projects include many district-wide improvements. So masonry repairs, playground equipment upgrades, a new maintenance work van. And then there's individual school improvements as well. So there's a couple of examples in here, it's two. So they do, it's kind of similar, um, you know, where they'll submit their uh, requests yearly. And then again, depending on the, the budget uh, and what's approved to uh, make those, those um, repairs. Okay. And then point three. So provide adequate facilities to accommodate public safety functions such as, uh, or sorry, specifically fire and police departments. So due to the pricing and supply chain impact of uh, bidding out large long-term building projects, the fire station building committee decided to not bid all three of the fire stations at once. So they did get a bid for the headquarters station and that project is underway. Uh, because of some structural issues with the engine bay floor in the East Milton station, that one will likely be the next one that they bid out. Um, that's not confirmed, but that's just what I was told uh, by the fire station building committee. And uh, they are under, sorry, there's a mistake here. <laughs> um, this is supposed to say contract, contractually obligated. Uh, to build a new access driveway between the East Milton station and the existing rectory. So that will be completed in July and August of 2023. So I think that they've, they've definitely been making progress, um, steady progress on, on this goal. Great. Okay, Roxanne. Um, support the Department of uh, Public Works in their effort to update outdated facilities. Um, and they had ARPA funding, uh, select board request for Norfolk, found, Norfolk County approval funds for the Harlan Street culvert um, assessment, and they've had a million dollars awarded under the Treasury ARPA funding for Milton for water main work. So this is listed as false on all three. Roxanne, would you say this should be a true here? I would think so, yes. Yeah, and what, do you think it's more than that, more than just started, or do you think it's just um, at that point? Um... It might be. It might be. It's certainly not met, but yeah. Um, I mean, there's a good, you know, they're constantly working on this. So, right. Yeah. Can I, can I ask when you say constantly working on it, does that mean that there's like they're building or that they have received like permitting permission to do this stuff? Like has the money's been spent? I'm just curious how, how, how we um, go about rating those things as started or progress met. Do you want to ex explain that piece, Cheryl? It's going to be yeah, different for I different guess. ones, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. This, they have ARPA fundings for some things. Um, so those are sort of one-time use funds. So like ARPA funding is one-time use fund for that. Or they get different grants for different things. Are the uh, uh, water and sewer included in this also? Because I know that you know, the MWA is constantly either low or no interest loans or grants uh, for repairing that. And that's a, that's ongoing sort of probably in perpetuity. Right, I mean, I think there's similar, um, there's different things. I mean, we've, we talked about that earlier in one of the other ones earlier, I think last time we met with the um, MWRA funds and so forth. So, I yeah, mean- one one of the things I'm looking at here, uh, 6.1.4 in the more detailed part of the plan, um, they, the DPW had a facilities analysis done, a whole study done, and there was a recommendation because there are a lot of um, outdated facilities and uh, at the DPW property. And um, that plan hasn't been implemented at all. Any of those, I don't believe. So I think, uh, leaving this at started, based on what Roxanne said, probably makes sense, but not to 50%. And to Regina's question, it's really a judgment call based on our knowledge of what we're able to, to gain by reaching out to these departments. It's um, it's really not more than that. Yeah, no, no, I get it. I, I just, 
I'm learning. And so my goal was to figure out if started means, you know, maybe, maybe it's always about having the money at that point, or if there's so much planning that goes into it, that there's no way you can be considered starting uh, until all the grants and funding is secure. I'm just trying to figure it out. Thank you. Yeah, some things I think which have ongoing kind of needs, like in uh, consolidated facilities, I think it's important that it's noted that that department continues to be supported by funds, you know, funding. So as long, you know, to, to make sure that that's on the radar screen, that that funding needs to stay there um, and not go to something else. Because, you know, there's always a budget challenges, as I'm sure you're aware. Yeah. Uh, Dick, you have your hand up? Yeah, just to, just to follow up on your statement, uh, Cheryl, in terms of the study that was done a number of years ago, and I think mm -hmm. it was as long as 10 years ago, mm -hmm. on the actual DPW yard and, um, and usage of the property, I, do you think it makes sense to get an update on where that is, or is that just another study that sits on the shelf somewhere? Um, I don't think there's been much talk about it recently, and... Yeah. Um, I think so maybe Roxanne yeah. could reach out to Chase Berkeley and find out. So yeah, just sure, because, I can do that. Okay. Yeah, just to Roxanne, just to find out where it is. I mean, I don't think there hasn't been much much said about it in, in a number of years. And and looking at I think there's a new 40B development going on uh, being proposed right up the street from that. I think you know, we should kind of take a look at, you know, what what is 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 that the proper use of that property? As we look at everything in the town, is it could, could something else could could the DPW yard be moved someplace and that land be used for other purposes? Um, uh, but I think there were some fairly strong recommendations that came out of that the initial report that probably I'm almost positive nothing has ever been done with it. So it might be, be interesting. Helpful. Yeah, it'd be interesting too because it predates uh, Chase Berkeley's. Um, oh yeah. Here. Yeah, so it's, it's, and, it's been probably, I'm going to guess, seven to 10 years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, you know, there was, was a lot of talk about doing it, why we're doing it. And then it all of a sudden, there was a report that was virtually just put in the shelf. And I think we owe it to ourselves to know what was recommended, what happened to it, and is it still something that should be looked and thought about, or it should be just discarded. Well, it makes perfect sense to me because it was also at the same time the libraries were, I mean, the um, fire stations were beginning to be spoken about. And I know it wasn't thought to be possible to advance both at the same time. So, you know, I think it is worth asking Chase, you know, what whether uh, that report needs to be, whether he thinks that there's anything that needs to be done to do maybe an update to that report based on his experiences there, because it is an important asset, an important department in the town. I think it was sort of put on the back burner really mm -hmm. at the timing wise. I think a lot of it was the timing. Mm -hmm. Can't move forward with all capital expenditures at the same time, right? Right. Okay, so that would be great if you can bring uh, some update on that, uh, Roxanne. Sure. And Elaine, this goes to what we were just talking about, the library. I know, I bumped it down from 50% <laughs> progress met after having the discussion on the <laughs> parking. Um, so yeah, you know, they're doing a lot. They're, they're doing what they can, you know, to really help, you know, be, or attempt to be, you know, a, a community center, you know, for, for Milton residents and, and people outside of Milton too. And, you know, they, their initiative in 2021 was Milton Moves, and that was physical literacy initiative. So it was around health, wellness, and nutrition. And then now they're gearing up to start Milton Grows, and that is centered around gardening, sustainability, and climate change. So I was told that they do outreach on, you know, a consistent basis to preschool, public school, and seniors. They'd like to be doing more outreach, but they're limited by the size of their staff. And then, of course, um, they would like to be able to offer uh, more programming, but there have some constraints with parking. The library also has community space that is, is bookable and their meeting rooms are bookable online and those are back to pre-COVID levels and at capacity. So they're definitely doing a lot for the community and, and to help expand its role as, as a community center. It's interesting in the detail again, it's on page 190 if anyone's <laughs> has the plan in front of them. Um, it says, the 
two of the bullet points at the top, address parking limitations and improve pedestrian and bike connections and street crossings. So almost 10 years later, those items are still outstanding. So I, I think there's, I mentioned earlier that uh, it's in the plan to, just to help with the library. So there you go. Yeah, it feels good that we're putting some money behind those efforts. Okay, great. You want to move to the next one? Provide adequate recreational facilities accessible to all parts of town and for all ages. So uh, this is uh, similar to one that we did a couple months ago or, or, or last time we went through this, but street hockey rink um, at Kelly Field, which is new in 2021, and Cunningham Basketball at Andrews Park is being um, redone. And then, and the Milton High School, and then there's the pickleball and tennis courts that were also installed. So they're kind of doing what they can with, with the resources that they have available as well. Okay. So you've uh, given- uh, Cheryl, Aaron, Elaine, I'd also add that we, uh, the Community Preservation Committee has a uh, playground proposal um, for funding in uh, the Peverly Park part of town uh, just for me to meet a recreation need in a part of town that is has limited playground. So that's that's also something ongoing. Can you say that that one a, more time, sorry. Um, there's a proposal for um, a playground built at Peverly Park uh, to service uh, sort of the the childhood recreation needs in uh, on the west part of town that has a no playgrounds uh, currently. Um, so so that's a an important sort of uh, element of the broadening the geographic scope of our recreational facilities. Great, thank you. I'm sorry, Elaine, did, on 6.1.5, did you think that that should be a 50% on the completion on the library? Or no, because I think started? given the top, you know, the two priorities that you mentioned and that okay. there's still so much to be done, I, I don't think so, unless others disagree. No, I just wanted to see if, if we were just talking about that. Okay, I'm fine with that level. That helps support what we're working on now. All right. Um, and thank you, Josh, for that update on the CPA, CPC. Um, then Elaine, I think it's next for you also with point seven. Yeah, so that's support the Milton Cemetery efforts to provide adequate space and service to town residents. So they did acquire a parcel of land um, that they plan to create a meditation garden with a, a walking path through. They are currently fundraising for two projects. One is to rebuild the historic stone wall on the cemetery property, and the other is to create a veterans memorial uh, sited at the Garden of Honor. Lisa Ahern stated that they need financial support for the veterans memorial and to also help with removal of old dead trees that would require a crane. Um, so that was something that I wanted to bring up as a potential for some use of funds that we, if we have any remaining at the, you know, end of this year. And then last, they, um, another capital improvement project in the queue includes uh, new trucks and paving. So on the, can you go back to what you said about the meditation garden and the stone historic, is it a historic stone wall? Yeah, so they're, they're um, fundraising through the community on the historic um, stone wall. They, when I, you know, I talked to Lisa and she, she actually asked if it would be okay if, if they sent over a more comprehensive list of kind of what they're hoping to work on, but this is what they, that she provided me as of now and what they could really use some support in is the veterans memorial that they'd like to build and then removal of um, some really, really old dead trees on the property. Okay, some of the um, some of the things may be appropriate for some, for us and some may not, but maybe we'll wait for the list and then we can talk about that in more detail. Sure, that makes sense. Seems Elaine, did they, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Has, um, was there any mention made of the housing that's there on site? Because I know the, the former director was using it or at least passed, but the current is not, and therefore it's vacant. And whether it's income producing property for the cemetery to be able to use some funds to do other things with, or is, I don't know, I, I, I don't know the story behind it, but I'm just wondering if that was part of the questioning. No, and it didn't really get brought up. Um, 
but I can circle back and and find out. Yeah. That might just be a source of funds for them, you know. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Anything else on that before we move on? Nope. All right. So I didn't I didn't give this any progress because in looking at it, I was actually kind of curious how it landed in the planning department's um, lead party um, piece of this because it's increasing the awareness of existing facilities and improving information available on the town website, increase the use of existing, um, like the senior center, the high school auditorium, um, and also things like, I, I think sharing of Curry College or Milton Academy, occasionally there's some like a open skating or something like that. But that really seems to fall more in select board. So um, Roxanne, I'm gonna ask if I can shift this one over to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we can leave it here because of planning department for now, but I was going to say, I don't really know how the planning department interfaces with these things. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. So will you just take a look at it, Roxanne, anyway? Sure, before? I'll take a look at it. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And speaking <laughs> as the planning department, we have not been involved in the last six months really with, with this, these efforts, though, though we've been very closely tied to the um, work at uh, Milton Landing that I see in, in, in the notes there. So, so we are tied to, but, but are not um, leaders on this front um, you know, who do all the zoning and, and relevant fun stuff that planning does. Okay, so on the next one, um, point nine, the uh, create additional facilities for use by the community. Uh, and we go to the detail of that, it talks about considering the historic fire station if it's not used for the fire department um, for a community center that, that existing building, I think, is still um, there. Were I'm not sure where that stands. The last I heard, it was depending upon how budget the budgets came in, the bids came in, whether there were going to be funds to renovate that building. Does anybody have any more knowledge about that? No. I, okay. So um, that is something that we talked about with our town center planning when we were working on that, if that were a community space of at least available for public meetings. Um, but uh, how about I will just need to, yes? Oh, excuse me. I thought that the new fire station central was going to have space for community rooms. I believe it does in their plan. Yeah, the last I heard was a and I don't know how far the money was going with that, Roxanne. So maybe we could find that out. Okay. And the notes here refer to the Milton Landing. 6.1.9. Not the fire station. 6.1.9 and mine, the one that says select board is working to improvement recommendations made in the study, I would say, at Milton Landing. Yeah, maybe that's just in the wrong spot because if I'm I'm looking at the page 191 and it talks about the fire station and community center. And the I think this might just underscore the lack of activity on this front. I'm sorry, can you repeat, Josh? I think that may underscore that this uh, this effort has not been sort of on, ongoing and may want to be um, shifted to to you know three falses. Okay. Somebody's got their cursor on it. If you want to shift that to a false, is that you, Elaine? No. All right. There we go. Okay. Um, next, Roxanne. Uh, ensure an adequate water supply, both in terms of quality and quantity. Um, so this is where they have the local pipeline assistance to the MWRA with those no interest loans. Um, and they did also, the other thing that I guess we should add in there probably is that with some of the ARPA funds, they did do some water line um, 
and I think it was sewer and water line perhaps um, that they did on, um, I forget what street it was, but they did do some work with that, with ARPA, with um, ARPA funds, like a million dollars worth of ARPA funds. Okay, so that should be true. At least it started. Should it be more than started, Roxanne? Yes. Yeah, you could switch that. Okay. Is that you, Josh? That's already on there. All right. Next. Um, continue okay. to improve. Sorry. No, go ahead. Um, I continue to improve the efficiency of the town sewer system. And uh, the DPW, they use camera cameras in the lines and replace lines that need to be replaced. So that's sort of an ongoing thing as well, right? That's so ongoing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's that been should... started. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that should yes. have at least a true in the beginning. Right. So should both of these be true to fifty percent at least because they're an ongoing, or should they just be true to started? Well, I think they should be true to starting. I don't know, like for instance, if they've, you know, how much more line they think they need to replace in the town. Okay. I don't know if anybody knows that. Um, I'd have to talk. One hundred percent, I think, is the uh, everything has to be replaced. It's in a, in the, it hasn't been done for about eighty years, and it's supposed to be a fifty-year <laughs> project. I think. Yeah. No, I'm just saying in terms of how much they've done. I should have rephrased that. <laughs> right. But I think not, if, not if you. If that's you ask Chase, he'll say, he'll tell you that it, they're on like a fifty-year plan, and that's how much they're doing every year, yeah. just a little bit to to uh, continue. Yeah, so probably not fifty percent then, <laughs> safely say. Right. Um, okay. The next. Should I go to the next one? Yes. Improve infrastructure to support alternative modes of transportation, a pedestrian bike plan. That's in the work. So, um, I think. Right, that's you had attached it to the to our stuff, our meeting. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're going to. Um, uh, that was for information because we helped fund that plan. Um, but if we want to put that on an agenda to get into the details a little bit more, we can do that. But I know Roxy on the select board will be taking that up as well. Okay. So if you want any to take any feedback to the select board from this committee, we can put it on an agenda. Details of it. Probably would be good to go through. I mean, it's, I don't know about the other members, but I haven't, you know, fully had a chance to talk about that. Um, okay. Where are we at? Sorry, we are at. You need the cursor there. Yeah, 6.2.4. Okay. Uh, control the quality and quantity of storm, storm water runoff and um, stormwater mitigation management by the DPW and conservation. And sometimes they um, have orders of condition uh, in intent are in, that are required on certain projects. So I'd say that's ongoing as well. Okay, so we'll put it true here. Yeah. All right. Improve so communication we'll between town government and Milton residents. Um, so just to, we want to encourage transparency, listen to residents' concerns ongoing. So okay, so it's true now. to start, okay. I would say so. All right. Um, broad and volunteer participation on municipal boards and committees. And um, I'd say that's true. We're, uh, Aaron Bradley and myself are on that subcommittee to look at the committees that we have in town and uh, the process and so forth. So I would say that's, you know, in the work. So definitely started. And there so is Roxanne, would you say, sorry, the, to broaden the volunteer, was that also uh, diversity? The select board had a, uh, has a diversity and inclusion plan, right, that you adopted? Yeah, so it's really to make sure that people know, like, what's available for committees. And um, we're going to work on some guidelines and things like that for committees, um, anybody who's on a committee, and encourage you know, diversity of uh, people to get involved in the town and committees and making sure that we're putting the information out there to what's available. Okay. Yeah, because I'm looking at the detail and it says recruit volunteers from all parts of town and all demographics, including youth, minorities, et cetera. Yeah. So, okay. Yep. So, um, so it's ongoing. Started, right? 
Yep. Um, continue to focus on implementing sustainability measures for the environment, including energy conservation and use of alternative sources of energy recycling and kitchen waste collection. Um, so you can see in here is the launch of the, the community electricity aggregation program. Um, and I, I think Josh and Mira are doing some things through the town, um, looking at some of these um, different things with regards to sustainability, correct? That's, yeah, that's totally correct. I can, I can put a full list of the, the work we're doing uh, in the comments, but it includes getting uh, certified as a sole smart community, which um, gives us greater sort of eligibility for certain grants and, and it counts favorably when we apply for environmental grants to the state. Um, we're working with Winter Valley on a um, microgrid feasibility project, um, which we're anticipating getting grant funding for in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we've just been awarded um, $50,000 from the Community Compact Program to analyze a, a greenhouse gas inventory that we did in-house and completed last month, uh, bring it up to sort of international compliance and then um, use um, some consultant support to prepare a, a high-level executive uh, sort of action plan out of that, um, which we're doing in, in partnership with Sustainable Milton. So, so those climate action planning efforts are, are ongoing uh, with, with a lot of success. And uh, we're, we're, we're also working on some low impact design uh, zoning work on, on both the sort of subdivision uh, and cluster bylaws as, as well as some, some broader zoning uh, proposals to, to come sort of in the longer term. Josh, can you can you um, speak to the kitchen waste collection aspect of this particular um, line item? I know I had questions from several um, uh, neighbors and constituents that were asking about, well, Boston has its own um, composting efforts. And I'm just curious where, where we are in the process. Yeah, um, that's, that's being led by our environmental coordinator, Mira Patel. Um, so she, she certainly knows uh, this more in depth than I do, but um, it's it's an ongoing concern. We are working closely, but in particular with the schools to do um, more industrial sort of scale compost, uh, as well as we we, we do um, uh, have pretty regular conversations with uh, Bootstrap Compost, which does composting programs in, in the greater Boston area. Um, so those conversations are ongoing, but there hasn't been um, significant progress um, in the last uh, couple of weeks as far sure. as I've been uh, informed. Thank so you. Josh, maybe you can check in with, um, I know at the Fruit Center, they have um, something there about a program for um, for curbside pickup of kitchen waste and they're looking for enough people to opt in to do that. And then the pricing will be able to go down. So maybe, yeah. You can look into that a little bit more. I, I started to look at it, but I haven't delved into it in detail. I just know that it's it's there, and it would be, I think, definitely attractive if enough people knew about it. Maybe enough would sign up, and we could yep. get that um, done. Mira has been, uh, I think, posting on on town social media. You know, going back to the transparency work. So, so there's there's certainly efforts to try and uh, publicize this. Um, I know she she made some stickers too about composting that she's she's given out to Milton High students as part of their Earth Club. So trying to do, do get out the sort of uh, word, uh, but but it's it's firmly in in her uh, remit. So I'll, I'll check in with her um, and and update you all. I think going to the schools could be interesting too. When my kids were in elementary school, there was an initiative on um, not using so much um, like plastic bags. And so my kids were like, okay, we, we have to take our snacks and lunch in reusable containers. We can't use plastic bags, mom. We can't use straws, mom. And it came from what they were, the, the um, I don't remember if it was sustainable melt-in, but it, they were going into the schools and like, you know, educating the kids. So anyway, uh, it might be something where the, if there's, I know this program at the high school, you know, maybe they, the high school um, uh, sustainable 
a club, I forget the title of it, but might be interested in a public outreach campaign. Yeah, the, should probably the, the, Club. ask a, uh, the uh, school department is responsible for doing this uh, on a townwide basis anyway. I know the DEP has mandated it for recycling or, or composting food waste from the town because the town as a whole produces more than, I forget what it is, but it's, what is it, like a half a ton a week or something like that. Um, and I know that Glover and Tucker are working on it now. Um, but I think they they lost Jackie Morgan as the um, uh, food uh, czar in town. She was running all the meals, and I don't know who is doing it now. But I think there is a hiccup before it could be spread to other. Uh, so at least that's the, the sustainable Milton folks are saying that right now that it's just a Glover and Tucker. But I don't know to what extent. Do. I'm forgetting if it's a state law or city law, but restaurants and uh, the state are DEPs, required, right? Yeah, it's all colleges and and uh, you know, but it, I think it, I forget what it is, but it's a it's a so many pounds per week, and I think Milton reaches that if you combine all the schools together, they do. But we also have like the restaurants, the food center, Milton Hospital, Curry College, right. all those places, right? So they would be right. mandated also by state law, Taper. I don't know about the fruit center necessarily. It's a, it's the amount of the restaurant. Uh, it depends on how many pounds or tons a week you you produce. Okay. So it's a measurement. I mean, hopefully it will be mandated. In my opinion, I mean, I don't know. well, the fruit center is doing composting. I know they're participating. They, that's where they have it at checkout. I'll have to look into that a little further. Breaking news: the trustees approved the fifty percent match at the library. <laughs> All right, there we go. They did just one other note on the composting. There, uh, the the Department of Public Works did share like a code that you can get your first month free, and then it's six dollars a month, which is a pretty pretty good rate. But not free, but something. It's got to be less than what it's costing us to send it to landfill or incinerator or wherever it's going, right? Okay. Well, isn't that interesting? That generated a lot of discussion, that particular topic. <laughs> I think it, it's it's definitely uh, of interest. All right. So are we all set with that one? I think right. so. Okay, Roxanne, let's see you again. Uh, yeah, too many of these. Uh, <laughs> so a growing elderly population wishing to age in place. Um, and we, I wrote down here program at the library bringing books to the elders programs with the nursing students at Curry um, and programs in the transportation. Yeah, it seems to me Council on Aging is doing a lot of programming. They have a lot. Um, yeah, so we, what do you want to put here, Roxanne? We're going to I would have say it started and okay. I would say probably 50%. I mean, they have so many programs and so many, okay. you know, I think that would be true. Okay. Okay. All right, then we're going to go to Elaine here. I get jealous of the programming they're doing sometimes. <laughs> um, so support teens and their expressed desire for more to do. I noted here the Wildcat Den reopening. Um, there's a ski program that we have at Blue Hills. There's the Milton High School Drama Club, which is top of mind after their uh, Beauty and the Beast last weekend, which is incredible. Um, sports clinics, there was an expansion clinic lineup in the summer of 2022 to include track and field and then the new street hockey rinks as well. So I would say that, um, kind of go back and forth on started at 50% progress. I think there's probably a lot more that we could do, but I think that there's been a lot of effort to, to um, especially get the Wildcat Den back up and running and um, have different programming around town. Okay. Shaper, to you here. So I did not do anything on this because I see that it, I mean, it, it was listed as also a, a, sort of a very similar one uh, that uh, okay. Roxanne's worked on for um, the same or very similar uh, partners and strategy. So I don't know, are we, I, 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 haven't, I haven't addressed this at all. Okay, let me just go back to two. It was back to what did you say? Two point two point eight. 
Yeah, I just saw that Roxanne was listed as, and, and then there's a, you know, okay. A fair amount's been done, and I'm just wondering is, are we repeating ourselves? Right. I know that makes sense. Okay. So let's go back. We're, we Let are... me be clear. There is not enough repeating going on. We have a lot of work to do. So having it on here twice is not a problem. We just need to figure out how to partition our resources to make some um, big steps in this area. That may be so, but I think that calling the same people multiple times from the same committee, it makes it sound like we don't know what we're talking about or what we're doing. So it helps, I think, to be concentrated in our effort that if we're going to do this, we, you know, some people would go one direction, other people would tackle another part. But that was my Maybe concern. what I would say is this should be Roxanne. So it's one person doing the follow up. So to that sure. point, Tabor, um, just so you don't have, as you said, does that make sense, Roxanne, if it was already covered? I think it was covered in that other one, yes. Right, so let's pretty, go back to that, yeah. because I think that was before um, uh, Regina was on the committee. We'll just take a moment to go back to that for a second after I take this in. Sorry, I'm going to Roxanne with the All right, so 2.2. And I'm going to go back on my screen to it. What is the difference in the in the on the document that has more detail on each of these? Yeah, that's what I'm going back to on my other screen here. Give me one second. All right, so 2.2.8, under the bullet points, there's promote equal opportunity for minorities, men and women, and prevent housing discrimination, encourage library to develop educational programming around cultural awareness, form a newcomers club to welcome new residents, develop orientation to milk materials, work with faith communities on this, continue to provide support to those with less support organizations that provide food to those in need, continue to make an effort to bring people from different backgrounds together through event planning, encourage multicultural use of town gazebo, uh, e.g. ethnic food and music festivals. And it gave the lead partner to the select board and Neighborhood organizations, no place for hate. We are Milton. And Roxanne, you noted the, the, the committee, the committee issued a report, right? And uh, do you have an update on what the select board's next steps are on, the, on that? Um, I don't know that we haven't seen the final report from KL Scott. Okay. They came and presented to us at one point, and they said they were continuing to finalize everything. So um, I don't know that, I mean, the select board didn't get another presentation by them yet. Okay. They were going to have recommendations. Okay. And we gave this a 50% based on that assessment. Mm -hmm. So Regina, um, Maybe you want to look at that one and see what you think, if you want to ask point two point two point eight. Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm just looking at the organizations that you have listed there as partners for this and the neighborhood associations that I can think of, and forgive me because I'm not a lifelong Milton resident, but the neighborhood associations that I can think of um are not uh in the the west on the west side of Milton um as much as they are on the east side of Milton and the cable TV station as important as it is for our municipal government and getting word out it is not the place that um, um black indigenous and other people of color in this town go for their primary um news uh, and I also think that no place for hate and we are Milton 
are not resources that are tapped into as much by um, Black, Indigenous, and people of color in this town. So I think we have a disconnect between um, the incredibly well-meaning folks who are trying to boost these efforts and the places where they need to look and go and be visible and a part of in order to truly um, help to break down some of those boundaries. Um, and that includes our you know, entirely white select board. Um, and until my joining this board, uh, this uh, committee, the entirely white, white MPEG. Um, so I think there's, there's a lot of room for growth. There's a lot of room for more people being involved in learning um, what, what needs to be done. But I think to say that we are 50% of the way to creating an atmosphere of inclusivity in Milton um, is, is a hard sell. All right, so I'm going to flag this one for when we're going to talk about some of the things we want to focus on in our time. I'm just going to flag this with blue as something that we're going to want to come back to and talk about. Does that make sense? And okay. I'm more than happy to be a part of uh, helping with that, not necessarily the lead because I'm so new to the committee, um, but I think it is more than a one person um, job. Uh, and I and I don't see an issue with having it be in more than one section of this uh, implementation plan because it does involve far more than just one group. Okay, so I'm gonna come back down to, and give that the blue color as well. Because one Maybe of our- Maybe the strategy should be different is, because the yeah. strategy here just seems like it's awfully repetitive. Maybe there's a slightly different, description on that strategy. Maybe, and we, we certainly have more than one uh, line item when it comes to um, our seniors and and more than one um, in more than one of the areas. So I think if we take a look at what, what line items uh, are there for seniors and how those are parsed out or for our young people, it may be helpful to think about that in terms of creating opportunities for uh, diversity and inclusion here too. Okay. Can we hear okay. the details on this one, Cheryl? Yeah, I'm going. So I'm scrolling back to it. Sorry, give me one sec here. Um, yeah, you know it does sound similar, and I I do think um, you know there are things in here too where other there are other topics where there's there is showing up in a couple different places, and that's something where um, you know maybe we can just somehow make sure we're flagging that they are showing up. And in part, maybe it's because what the goals are. So if we go back to what goal two versus goal six are, there is probably some overlap, right? So goal six is to provide high quality public facilities, services and infrastructure. And if we go back to goal two, is to promote health and wellness. You know, So there can be some repetitive things across different goals, right? But and you know there's so much here for us to track that you know um, maybe uh, we can think about using a color coded system where some things that are related to one another are color coded. This is just purely the way it is in the document right right now. So the way we're tracking it, but there have been places where as I've gone through things that I've been sort of assigned to pay attention to, there is some uh, overlap in different places. And it is where you have to kind of go back to the detail to see if there's something there that's different. But on this one, I really don't consider. Like here on 6.3.3, it says, let me go back in the detail. It says, uh, invite residents of different backgrounds to, show, to share celebrations, food, and other events. Well, Celebrate Milton is somewhat of that, right? But then the next one is consider bilingual outreach to invite residents of different backgrounds to participate in town affairs. And, you know, that's, um, I don't know, um, you know, bilingual outreach or multilingual outreach is uh, something that the town has done much of, you know, cities do it quite a bit. But anyway, that, that is a little bit and different. And our, our schools, you know? our schools, at least our elementary schools certainly do it. Okay. Um, I know at Tucker School, um, the newsletter is translated into several different languages when it goes out. Um, 
And so there has been attention paid to that, at least at the, in our schools. Okay, so we could add that here in Tabor or Roxanne right. or, or, or me right now. Uh, <laughs> um, so, but I, I do think, uh, you know, in terms of which we're going to talk about uh, once we get through this. Um, uh, Um, which things we think need more attention. So, you know, and one of the things about adding two members was to get some other voices, you know, where this was all new to them, fresh to them, is different than those of us who've been working on it for a while. So um, we're going to move on to the next one now, uh, which would be goal seven, strength and capacity to plan. Okay. So, that's you, Roxanne. Oh, gosh. Okay. A lot of you here. I noticed that. Um, encourage broader participation in town government. So the town clerk lists the openings on the websites, the deadlines for submitting signatures. I believe that's also in the newspaper. Um, we're doing that subcommittee, um, a select, you know, select board subcommittee looking at um, how to do better outreach and things like that. And I know um, that they've also tried to post things on the website and different things like that. So we're working on it, work in progress. Yeah, so it's interesting here, there is overlap with this too, if I look at the detail, because um, it says ensure that volunteers represent the more diverse competition, composition rather, mm -hmm. of the town's population, actively recruit younger residents, lower income and minority residents to get involved. Increase awareness of town meeting to new residents, I, e.g., what is it, how to run for it, how to participate. Um, and then the next bullet, involve youth in cable TV, social media, and in creating a team calendar of events. So, um, you know, when I moved to Milton, I had no idea what town meeting was, and I'm sure there's a lot of people like that. So I'm going to give this a blue one, too, because it, it, does, it, it seems to tie in. Um, to the what we were just talking about, again, to come back to, all right. So, but um, we have here false for all of these. Do we think these are all false? Do we think there's any beginning of these? Um, I would think that they're starting to, sure. I would think they're both because we have a subcommittee, we're working on it. We've been posting things, um, encouraging okay. people to get involved, sure. Okay, next. Um, uh, ensure that the planning and management processes are open, inclusive, respectful, and welcoming, um, and that we're following open meeting law compliance. Um, and the other thing I would say is, um, well, it's not directly under this. I was just gonna say that the um, town attorney is having these different forums that people can go to for um, open meeting law compliance and other topics. So there's one for the next two months basically coming up. So it's a good way to learn about town government. And um, I forget what the other topics are because I've just came from another, I apologize. I had another meeting right before this. So I'm a little a little tired going oh, back. That's okay, that. no, I think that's right. That's fine, what you've covered is good. I'm just supplementing as I see it. So that's no. fine. Not to be um, taking any offense for you, Roxanne. No, that's fine. Okay. How are those train? How are those being communicated out for the training? Um, I believe they're posted on the website, the town website. I believe, and I thought I saw it in the newspaper, but I could be wrong. Someone sent it to me. I don't know if it was Cheryl or uh, someone, but I did. I did get an email for sure about it. Mm -hmm. The town sent out an, an email blast about it, uh, I think, twice over the last two months. Okay. Um, Actually, I did go to the open meeting one uh, last month, and it was very well done. I was very impressed. Okay. Um, let's see. Are we on to the next one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so improved communication between town government and residents, updates to the town and Milton site and upgrading recommended. So um, the new town administrator applied for a grant 
for some upgrades to the website. And I don't know that we have heard definitively whether we have that grant yet, but it would help to um, update the website for Milton. Okay, what do you think here? The... I would say started because, you know, there's a grant in the works to help okay. with that. All right. Um, improve town government. Um, and, you know, there's a, there are all these different, we have all these meetings, we have um, that I just won't see a broadband above in number six, town government study com committee completed its work several years ago. Um, looking at how to be more efficient with town government. We have the, the cable TV. You can request prior meetings if you've missed a meeting. And now I know that we have um, the meetings that are recorded that um, Jay Fundling is doing. So people can get access to that as well. I think one, one thing that we haven't done is uh, made sure that we have interpreters available for town meeting. Um, so like, for example, um, ASL, um, whether the meeting is on Zoom or in person for any of our older residents who might need it. Um, that's a service that's provided at low or no cost. Um, and you, you just have to book it well in advance to give them time to find a, a translator. And I was, I was very surprised that that hasn't already been a part of our normal workflow for ensuring that folks who are watching uh, town meeting either um, via the uh, Milton Access TV later or live, now that we're on Zoom, um, don't, don't necessarily have access to it if they're, if they're hearing impaired. All right, can somebody put that in the spreadsheet? Please. Um, I don't need Josh. <laughs> I, I also, I did try I'm to- I'm running in notes and I'll I, I did try to reach out for um, the debates that were sponsored by Milton Access TV. Um, I tried to reach out to make sure that those debates could have um, a, a, an ASL translator at them, um, but the timing was too short. So that's another option for, uh, for basically any debates that we have or forums that we have uh, for town government to allow those to have interpreters as well. Well, I know one thing that we've talked about in the, on the planning board and is how to make sure we get broad participation and some of these things I think could help with that, you know, help people um, feel like they can participate. So having that on here would be great. And and uh, it is here, consider bilingual messages. That's kind of not exactly, but bilingual is identified a little bit in some of these goals um, as a way of achieving a greater participation. Okay. Um, All right. Um, so that brings us to this one. Okay. Ensure that the planning and management processes are open, inclusive, respectful, and welcoming. Um, I think we just did that one, didn't we? We did that one. So right. improved communication um, between town government and agencies, updates to the town of Milton site we talked about, um, right? Yeah, you're on 7.1.5, I believe, Roxanne. <laughs> okay. Am I, on, uh, am I right? Are we on 7.1.3? Or did you, did we go, am I missing? Well, that? we talked about the Milton website. Okay, so um, now. We're... So he's right. Ensure right. adequate storage of town archives. Um, we talked about this before and I'm I sorry. agree with the I'm select. Sorry, I'm, I'm I'm sorry. sorry, I'm sorry. Before we go move to that, we have a false all way across for improving town management. Um, I'd say probably started, right? Yeah. Because the broadband and we're we're doing um outreach for like we're trying to get quotes for that and so forth. So I, I'd say it started. I don't. It's interesting. It. This this mentions the uh, Department of Revenue report from 2013 and the recommendations in that report. And I do think there were a lot of things that were followed up on in that report. Mm -hmm. um, so this might even be more than than that amount. Yeah. In terms of the town management. Um, so I just <clears throat> I'm just going to put a question mark here just so we can come back and see what 
agree. Sure. Okay, go ahead. Ensure adequate storage of town archives. And um, I didn't have a chance to follow up with the town clerk, but we had talked about that before because um, she was saying she thought that was very important, um, but there was no funds really to do that. So I will follow it's up. It's interesting. It's a, yeah, you know, it's a, a, um, I think they have some things in the vault there in town hall that are some documents that are pretty old. Mm -hmm. And then some things that are just stored in that building, that falling down building in the back of the old fire station or to the right of that old fire station, that green structure, which is probably not the safest place in terms of combustibility. But anyway, okay, so um, we haven't done anything. Any really progress yet. on that? No. Yeah. I thought when we way back when we were doing the fire station, Katie at that time had asked about putting this into the fire station uh, because there's ample room on the second floor of the new fire station where they had some mezzanine area or other things where these didn't necessarily have to be easily accessible, um, but they had to be reachable somehow so that they could be brought out for the public. But I, I don't know, I, I don't remember what the architect said at the time. Now we were all in the meeting. I just can't remember what was said about it, but it was discussed back then. Uh, Tabor, um, to that point, there's this, certainly been discussion about using the second floor of the uh, existing fire station. The building. old fire station, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, not, not the new headquarters. Um, and most progress on that second floor has kind of stalled uh, to sort of use, use the money they have to, towards the construction, but that's still a, a consideration. And um, I know they've, they've gone to the Community Preservation Committee to try and get some some additional funding to to ensure the the sort of structural stability and, and envelope security of of the uh, old HQ building, so that that may be continuing, but that's stalled. I think that with the second floor wasn't handicap accessible, and therefore yeah. putting another elevator in was too expensive for the small square footage, the payback. So, but because they're archives, they could be scheduled to be brought down so that yeah. they could be viewed by uh you know people that couldn't go up there so they would be strictly like a vault it would be off from yeah. it would be uh out of the it would be out of the public's purview uh it would have to be dealt with by the clerk or somebody else is there any reason why these archives couldn't be stored in the library I had um, asked about that. I, I think there was a preference to keep them on site. Um, I don't know if they have the room for the storage. There's a lot of stuff that sometimes people have to access. Um, and not present. all of the documents can be, there was some interest of like, oh, we can scan everything in, um, but there's certain documents that they really can't, they need the hard document for. Right, but um, if it's not going to be actually in town hall, and we're talking about as, a, as an option in the, old firehouse or something like that if we need need space um i don't think it's the library is that far away that if we had to add if someone had to access it they couldn't do that and in terms of scanning or any sort of copying i would i would imagine the library would have those facilities also yeah i don't know if they've had any talk i don't know i'll have to follow up with sue galvin to see if they've talked about that at all yeah I, mean, well, I think i think you know once once you go from it's either, it's either going to be in town hall, which is which I certainly understand. But if it's if it can't be in town hall for whatever reasons, usually okay. spatial reasons, and we're going to go outside, we should take a look at any and all options. I would guess um, going forward. Right, and I think we have to figure out what the space requirements are, what they need right. for. I mean, I don't I don't know what they're talking about in terms of how much room they need. Right. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Tabor. Uh, so uh, develop effective collaboration with area institutions. This is very similar to uh, 7.2.3, develop uh, agreements for sharing resources, having access to the institutional facilities. Both of these um, were 
uh, lead party was town administrator. And I spoke with Mike Dennehy at one point very briefly back in January. And he said, look, I, I don't think this is a good time for me to be doing this. Um, you know, I'm on my way out. So um, this past summer, uh, or uh, maybe it was September, uh, the uh, secretary said, look, you know, give the new town administrator uh, a little time to adjust. So I have not met with the town administrator, uh, the new town administrator yet uh, regarding this. Um, we had one missed meeting and um, I would expect in the next two or three weeks, I probably ought to be able to get uh, some time, but I, I don't know whether he's actually uh, delved into this yet. So those are those should stay false across the board, both of those. Okay. Uh, okay, work with institutions to mitigate impacts on the town and residents. Um, so they do receive pilot payments from Milton, uh, from Milton Academy. Well, I'm not sure about that, Curry College. I guess Milton Academy did do something this past year. And um, Curry College, yes, they did. So on this one, yeah, so on this one also, um, it's uh, talked about creating institutional overlay districts. Uh, that's something that um, hasn't been done. So Josh, it's something I think that you and Tim could talk about. Um, and that would, and it's saying with specific zoning requirements, some of these things are also under Dover Amendment. So what we can do and what we can't do is restricted there. But maybe here uh, we can uh, let's say a true for starting, but that's it, Roxanne. I agree? would say so. Yeah. Okay. Carol, aren't we pretty, we're, we're pretty much limited as to what we can what we can do or require from any of these institutions in town, right? Correct. Oh, so and so an overlay district. I mean, I, I think I know what you we we are going with this thing, but I'm not sure how it really stands up in practicality. Yeah, it, in this plan, it said, uh, check in note six, other communities are able to at least have some. Uh, and so it says here that, there, that they, as, it, as you just said, the Dover amend Amendment, which refers to Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 3, and exempts agri certain agricultural, religious, and educational institutions from certain zoning restrictions. Um, and then, but not all zoning provisions, so that you can create a special zoning district, um, which you can work with those institutions. But yeah, you can't, there's certain things that you can't also restrict, right? It's definitely. Yeah. Do we have an example of, of one of these? I'm trying. I'm trying to. I mean, I do a fair amount of work with prep schools and colleges on the on the financing side, and I'm I'm scratching my head as to it's it's really based upon almost on personalities um, dealing with between the town and um, and some of the institutions. Um, it says you know, um, there's an example Middleton. I I haven't looked at that. If you want to. There's Middleton, a link. Middleton, yeah, a link, a link oh. to it. Yeah. I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm thinking Belmont, I'm thinking ones I'm familiar with, Needham, Wellesley, um, Groton, um, even Braintree to a degree. So, you know, I think I think it's a it's a good idea, but I think it really starts from having this having this discussion relative to the relationship between them. The town and these institutions. There's not really, there's not a lot we can really do if if they want to move forward with some of their expand expansions as long as it is tied into their their charge um, as as an institution. I think when once they get off the reservation, it's started like hospitals will build medical office buildings, you know, for for their for their doctors. Um, then then it gets a little bit more. In, into our purview, but if it has to do strictly with, let's say, Milton Hospital expansion, there's not there's not a ton we can do, or they have to do with us. I think there there are some limitations, zoning limitations that can be put in place, Dick. But we'll have to well, look into that we, a little further. Well, we can talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Use is the only limitation you can't control. 
you got height and density, setbacks, all that so sort of stuff. So for example, too. yeah, the, site, the planning board has done several site plan approvals for child care, early child care facilities. And we've looked at height, location on the property, setbacks, um, parking layouts, all of that. So you, there are, uh, you can require site plan approval, but uh, we haven't required, I think site plan approval. I don't, I don't believe planning board ever has looked at anything that Curry College has built, for example. But I, I'm not an expert on this, so it would be something to look into because okay. You know, some of the Curry College buildings are built pretty close to the roads, like in Roxanne's neighborhood, I think. And so, you know, the scale of the buildings, you know, if you can have them set back from the street further, their scale is, is less impactful. So there's things like that that I understand that we can do, we can do. So the, the, this, um, that kind of thing at an institutional, uh, uh, well, the the healthcare overlay are things that we haven't really done any work on. So it is something that I think um, could be looked at either in this end of this 10 year mark or in the next round uh, of an update. So um, that that is something I think, so 7.2, yeah, I'm gonna flag this as a blue just for further conversation. Um, all right, so. This is the same as the one above. It's not the, exactly the same, but it's the, I, I don't have any other information. Okay. Now, I mean, they, they've been ongoing for years, but I haven't had a, a chance to bring the new town administrator into it, which I think is pertinent. Okay. All right. So do we leave that as a false all the way across? Yes. Right. yes. Um, um, explore payment lieu tax uh, pilot options. Mm -hmm. um, the it, pilot payments were received from Milton Academy and Curry. We do have a pilot committee. Um, so, you know, once that's up and running again, um, you know, they'll be exploring avenues with the nonprofits in town. Okay. And you, would you keep this so as it's a ongoing? Yeah, I'd say I just, I don't know if it's 50%. I would, it's ongoing. Okay. So. And then um, this is similar to what we were just talking about. So with, with um, including churches. Um, so uh, ways of working together. Um, with the houses of worship. And whether there's any expansion or change of use. I mean, there's, you know, some discussion. Um, at least one church in East Milton, I think, has reached out to the planning department about thinking about their property. And that's something that um, I think is just. Uh, a relationship between the, the town government and these uh, houses of worship that contact the town about when they're thinking of some kind of change of use on their property, so that, that there's a relationship there so that the town's not surprised maybe if something goes up for sale or something like that, right? So I just gave this a true um, to start because I know some conversations have been had. I think there's probably more that could be had. I think it's a very difficult relationship, though. I mean, you're, you're talking about partners as religious institutions, but it's certainly Milton Hospital and all the private schools in town, um, you know, as Roxanne and I know, Curry College is, you know, very polite and very happy to talk to us on their terms when they ask. But when we go, when we turn the tables and ask them, you, you know, it's a, it's a stone wall and you're not going to, I don't, I don't see that it's likely you're going to get a lot of participation from these guys because it doesn't, it's not in their best interest until they have their plans done and, and, and they don't know what the future holds. So they're gonna hold off on that. I, I, I mean, it's just, it's a natural, I think, to hold off and not, not cooperate. Well, when some, well, I think the hospital did alert the town and had meetings with the planning department before they sold the property on Highland, for example. 
and the and the planning department and select board were able to help guide the um, hospital and what they thought would be a, a, an acceptable use on that on that property. So that kind of outreach between the, the institution or the uh, nonprofit or the house of worship uh, in, in discussion with the town before taking an action is what I think this is addressing, right? Um, right. So I mean, it never hurts to ask for sure. Right. Well, as an example, did, was was the town notified or the planning department notified when the when the Sisters of St. Joseph decided to put their convent up for sale? I don't know. Do you know Roxanne or Josh? I don't remember how we found out about it, frankly, um, but we are definitely looking into that, so. Right, but I mean, I, I'm just going back to the communications between, and this was an, an obvious religious, you know, institution with the town. I just wondered if that, if, you know, how, you know, if it didn't happen, how do we make it happen? Or how do we try to make it happen? I mean, I think it might have been that the, um, that somebody who was in real estate let the head of the school building committee know about that. And thus we found out through the great yeah, I, think kind of thing. I don't think there was, a, I don't know that there was a direct line of communication. I'm, I'm not sure. Right. But I think it was probably a broker who probably contacted the building authority because they sort of limited it as to who, because of their zoning as to who they can sell this, sell it to. But I'm just, I'm just wondering about going back to this, this communication issue mm -hmm. as to how do we, if we want that to happen, how do we, move that along so it will happen? Is it just calls to these institutions on a regular basis? Does, does, um, does Josh and, and Tim pick up the phone or does the town administrator call these people and say, do you have any plans where you give us a heads up? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it'll be me and Tim cold calling the churches, I'm afraid okay. to say. Uh, but we have actually recently did that to uh, folks at the Bank of America building out in uh, Milton Village and, and got some some answers back on what they're doing on that. So so maybe a little bit, but I think, you know, it's relying on the citizens of Milton to be participatory and and, and building that trust that, that we are here to support them um, and you all that, you know, we're, we're, we're here to help. And, and some of that comes down to broader communications efforts, but um, a lot of it is, is trust building. Um, that's that's a much deeper and, and longer process. I, I wonder if um, really the lead ought to be like a town administrator. You know. Yes, I mean I'm just saying if if it's important, yeah. we have to figure out who has the responsibility or ownership of. Is it you know do I call does someone call these institutions and. Start, start with the A's and go work their way down through the Z's uh, once a year saying, if you, if you have any plans, would you please include us in your discussion or let us know what's going on? Or do we just hope that someone finds out about it and a butter finds out about it and calls us and lets us know? Otherwise, I don't, I don't see how it fits in here, I guess, I guess is what I'm getting at. Yeah, it seems to me like the town administrator would want to open some lines of communications with the heads yeah. of this um, institution. So maybe that's something that um, is an action item that comes out of this and sort of some of the next steps. Now that we have a new town administrator, it's a good time to do that. Okay. And actually it would be interesting too, um, to do some outreach to these houses of worship in different neighborhoods, you know, maybe that's a way for the town administrator to um, have some kind of introduction into the town government in places that are underrepresented. Regina, I'm thinking some of the churches, um, the houses of worship, maybe on uh, Blue Hill Parkway, for example, or in in the vicinity. So. Um, I don't know if there's a master list of any of these, but in the contact person, but there is the interfaith of, um, I forget the exact title of the interfaith group, but maybe they would be a good starting point. Yeah. Okay, so um, this brings us to Tabor. So 
So um, the DCR and the Ponte River Watershed do um, you know, a fair amount of coordination on different events. Mostly it's the Ponte River Watershed uh, asking DCR for permission to use their parks for various events. Um, the Parks Department, I, I'm, I'm, we're, I'm at a loss for a lead party because the Parks Department serve as a natural for it, but uh, they don't have any plans to do anything more than what they're doing. They, the, the, their annual um, uh, fishing derby at, at uh, Turner's Pond is sort of their answer to this, but that doesn't really, that doesn't involve DCR properties. It doesn't involve, you know, uh, it, I guess it's officially within the watershed, but you know, the Ponce River watershed doesn't do anything with it. So there's there's not a lot of coordination there. Um, and I don't know if the, the parks, you know, was, um, I think is full up on their uh, projects uh, at the moment. So with uh, playing fields and other things that seem to be, you know, taking most of their energy. And I'm just wondering if anybody has a better idea of our lead party on this. Because I think the partners could easily be, you know, the Ponce River Watershed or somebody else um, in town, but it doesn't seem like they'd be, you know, who, who should be the lead department on this if it's not parks? Good question. The um, DCR property that's along the, the Ponset that's, um, then there's town-owned property next to that, which is close to Truman Parkway over in that area where there's property. Right off of Brushell Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so, it, it seems like I mean there are. I mean, the, the Greenways program uh, is uh, you know a, a perfect example of something that could be done. But you know, it's most of the people on the Greenways program, I would say at least two thirds are from uh, Boston. And then the other third are from other area towns plus a couple from Milton. But it's, um, so that, you know, that's the only, um, I'm trying to think of another ex good example in town that would make sense. Well, the, the, the Ponset um, trail is certainly well utilized by uh, people in Milton, right? So that's a DCR yes. property that yep. so is in partly in Milton and partly in Boston, right? Correct. Or is it all in Boston? No, it's it's about uh, maybe a it's third in Milton. Milton. Right? Yeah, but it's it, it, and that is, I mean, the the the, the uh, Greenways program, which is an independent group, uh, you know, coords coordinates with DCR and the Ponce River Watershed has, five, I think, five of their uh, members are on it, whether they're employees or or board members. So it, it's it's uh, it's an awful lot of uh, coordination back and forth, but it doesn't really involve um, you know Milton and, and as a town department of any sort. Hmm. And I don't know what you know. I, I'm not so sure. I think could you know could it be the schools maybe? Um, for certain things, I suppose, uh, but it's not, it just seems that uh, it doesn't really fall into anybody's wheelhouse. Maybe you can speak to the town administrator about this when you get that conversation. Started. That's probably a good point, yeah. yeah. Okay. Next. So before, yeah, yeah. Before Mike Denny left, he said the number one item for coordinating with the surrounding communities uh, had been for um, he was looking for uh, a couple of things like animal control uh, with Randolph, uh, you know, because you know the amount of time they really need more than one person, but not two, uh, and so there are some means of uh, uh, stretching a part-time employee into a full-time position working for one town or the other. Uh, the other was also on uh, uh, trash disposal. And um, they had plans with Quincy uh, to do that. And then uh, Milton got a better opportunity uh, and Quincy's timing for their trash disposal didn't match. So Milton went ahead and signed their own uh, separately. But there are a couple of these programs out there that should work and that um, there there have been uh, certainly with the uh, uh, the Neponset River Chamber of Commerce has uh, been staging a uh, group 
uh, the area town administrators to executive secretaries uh, for Westwood, Norwood, and uh, uh, Canton. And uh, Milton had participated. And uh, so it, it's one of those things that you know, by coordinating with other towns, it's probably it's one of those things that actually Metropolitan Area Planning Council does uh, give grants for. And so Mike had been talking about doing that. So this is, again, another one of those town administrator items that probably ought to be brought up. Okay, sounds like you're going to have a long conversation, Tamer. It might be a long meeting, yeah. We might, want to add Rand, we might want to add Randolph to one of our partners. It looks like we left, totally left, left them out. Uh, well, actually, Randolph was one of the partners that Mike Dennehy was talking about right, that's coordinating right. with uh, animal control. Uh, just say, let's just, just list them with Ken, Quincy, and Boston. Yeah. Okay. I'd also say the town had, was recently uh, part of a coalition with uh, Randolph, Weymouth, and Quincy on a uh, mass in motion grant program, which is to right. help address some regional food um, sort of justice issues. And uh, coincidentally, uh, Rena Dennehy is is the person who um, we, we hired to be in, sort of in charge of coordinating that program. So still very much tied to. Uh, That's how I knew all about it. Okay. Ah. And Milton Landing also, the grant that was um, received was uh, written in uh, collaboration with Boston and Quincy um, for the waterfront and, and potential dredging there and potential water taxi to Quincy to get to commuter boats. That's a good point. I hadn't thought of that one, yeah. Yeah, so that you could put that one in, Tabor. Um, or Josh. Roxanne? Um, two things. I believe the veterans agent that we have, doesn't he support Milton and Randolph? Um, and then, yeah. yeah, so I think Kevin Cook does do both. And then in terms of the Board of Health, there are several uh, different, you know, grants and things that have been done with several different towns. So the Mass in Motion is one, but there are several others. They're part of different groups with different towns. So um, Caroline could fill you in on all of that. So I'm giving this a true here to start anyway. Okay, are we good on that? Okay, on this, um, improving the connections to adjacent communities, um, identifying opportunities to extend walking and biking uh, connections to adjacent communities, that is something that is um, included in the bicycle pedestrian master plan. So we just need to look at that a little bit more carefully, what it entails. It also mentioned something I'm not familiar with, which is supporting the I-95, I-93 wetlands mitigation project that would add trails connecting Milton, Canton, Dedham, Westwood with access to Route 128 station and new residences and shopping. Does anybody know what that one is? That's a really old one, uh, but okay. it should be, you might want to consider as partners putting the Pontchart watershed down there because they've been pushing hard. They've got the Warner Trail that comes up through Rhode Island and it goes through Sharon now and they're working, uh, they've got parts in Canton, but they don't have anything in Milton yet. And it's uh, going up that corridor, which would be the old Route 95 uh, taking uh, you know, through Canton. Um, so anyway, that's okay. just a... But that, that information is really old when they were planning on adding the uh, fourth lane to Route 128, and that's been in existence for a while now, so. Okay. Uh, we are also working on a, a mass trails grant to, and, and have had uh, studies done on the old rail bridge behind 88 Wharf to connect um, the Milton Landing waterfront to Venture park in Boston. So, so that work is also ongoing to, to provide another connection to Boston and uh, extend uh, the, the waterfront access. Great. So I don't know. Um, I'd still leave that started, I think. Um, next. Sorry. Supporting implementation of the master plan goals. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, so we've already increased the membership to seven. Um, so that could be corrected. Um, I would say also one of the things that was recommended that we create and fill a position of assistant town planner. True. And we've done that. Yep. And, you know, the fact that we have a, a very active committee is another um, uh, piece of that, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this has to do... Um, this is some of the zoning tools um, in implementing the plan. And um, we've, we've, the planning board and planning department have been ticking them off or working our way through. There's still more to do. So I gave it a 50%. Um, inclusionary zoning is one that hasn't been tackled. Institutional overlay districts haven't been tackled. Mixed use overlay districts complete at Milton Village in the works in East Milton, Great Estates bylaw adopted, design guidelines and the commercial districts adopted in Milton Village will in the works in East Milton. Accessory apartments uh, provisions revising those, those are in progress at the planning board. And open space residential design option. Um, uh, we haven't looked at that any further than what we already have, although we did update our cluster bylaw. So I give this a 50%. Any questions or move on? Okay, explore funding alternatives. The DPW director looks at grant opportunities and applies for them, as well as the town planner. So we definitely have at least a true here. I think the department has really- Quite true for 50%. Boosted, uh, I know the planning department's really been successful in pursuing and um, being granted grants. Sorry, I couldn't think of a better way to say that. Um, okay. Um, continue to identify ways of becoming more efficient and cost effective that's ongoing and ongoing with consolidated facilities and department heads. Do you think that you would give that more than started? Would you give that 50%? Mm, probably. I mean, they're, they're continually working on it. So I would say it probably would be. Okay. Can I, can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. um this this one seems really similar to 7.3.1 and 7.3.2 um although this although it, it is also under town administrator unlike 7.3.2 i'm curious how uh, um how does this differ are we specifically talking about um departments and facilities here or um is it is it effectively the same I took it as a little bit more with um, consolidated facilities. That was why we formed that department so that it could, um, you know, cut some costs in the town and, and, you know, work for all of the facilities. And then the department heads themselves being responsible for looking where they can cut cost. So I looked at it more from that perspective. So Thank should, you, should any of them also be on the on 7.3.1 identifying opportunity for cooperation? I think this that's one with, is that's with other towns though. Yeah, I think this okay, one with different. other towns. This is more internal for our Got team. it. Okay. Thank you. That's what well, I would it said, say, I guess. Well, it yeah. said neighbor it said neighboring communities here, and that's where I, I think that's yeah. where I got confused. 
And I'm not sure, except if there's buying power in neighboring communities, I think this has to do with buying power. Like if you have multiple contracts for elevator inspections or you're buying whatever other light bulbs or things like that, you know? Got it, thank you, I appreciate it. Sure. Okay. Um, sharpen existing tools, um, improve project review. So that's um, very planning specific and DPW uh, specific. Those processes have been improved uh, with good collaboration between the departments when plans come in with a, um, for example, the stormwater review or other things that the planning board and planning department rely on DPW for. Um, but we still want to draft some revisions to our rules and regs. So I think I gave this a true for starting it, but not completing it. And, and Cheryl, quick question on this note mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, it, is this the area that um, would be concerned with the timeline for say permitting or anything like that in terms of sharpening existing tools? Yeah, the timeline is really, at least for the planning department, uh, dictated by law. Like you have to start, you have to open a hearing, you have to, certain decisions have to be made with a certain amount of time or, or they have to be um, agreed to an extension by the applicant. Is that true, Josh? Am I? Um, in, in some respects, yes, but there are cases where, you know, um, for example, part of our um, uh, soul smart designation that I talked about um, uh, er earlier in, involved this sort of commitment from uh, permitting staff to turn around solar permits uh, within three days. And that's that's not something that's sort of legally constrained by law, but it is constrained by our um, inspectional services staff capacity. Um, so that's, that's a case um, that can certainly be sort of relevant to the timelines of permitting, but when it comes to the sort of legally defined timelines of how long things must be uh, sort of held or, or how long a review process is, is, is more uh, legally determined. So hmm. for example, if it goes to the building department, I'm, I'm not sure about all permitting, like there's certain things that go directly that don't involve the planning board, but I do know that certain things that go to the building department, um, it depends on the backlog, but they have to reply with, in this, within 30 days with at least some comment or reply. And but 60 days for decision making or something. Yeah. And then yeah. The, zoning, the Zoning Board of Appeals has been backlogged because of the 40 Bs. Oh, you um, have to tell me, Cheryl. <laughs> and then um, um, I will say that in the rules and regs, which is where the application requirements are found, we do want to make improvements there because what happens is an application will come forward and then planning board will ask for more documents and it could it can take a while for a special permit to make its way through. So uh, improving, yes. improving, like our, yeah, improving our rules and regs um, will help with that so we can be very clear about what additional documents, at least in my time on the board, I'm pretty clear where we need to have some things that just need to be in there. But sometimes yeah. it's very specific to a project, like what you need for a wool cut woods out on the outer part of Canton Ave is going to be different than you might need, you know, for the Hendries down on Central and Elliott, right? Just because the sites are so different. But yeah, but I'm I'm talking more about residential um, properties and homeowners um, trying to make changes to their owned property. Yeah, so that's uh, definitely building department and ZBA. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. But that so that would not apply here. Got it. Yeah, but it. I mean, no, it could because it says homeowners here. You know, so um, I think that what that comes down to is both staffing at the building department and volunteers availability on the ZBA. Right. Um, and I think um, the building department has usually been pretty proactive about seeking additional staff when they think they need it. Uh, for this because permit application numbers are high, but uh, I know that the ZBA has been really backed up for the oh, last absolutely. year or two. 
Um, Absolutely. And I think I think for some residents, it's been disheartening to go on and see a ZBA meeting where the lawyers come and postpone or ask for postponement. So that entire meeting is not utilized for the 40 Bs, but it also stops our current residents from being able to make progress on their own projects. So it's challenging. Roxanne, you have your hand up. I do. Um, didn't we just have a uh, Ginny Donahue King get um, mm. into this position to help with some of this? You're right. Yes, she did. Um, so I forget what that person's called, but it's like um, it's through the it, it's from, yeah, it's something through the building department. Joe Prondack had recommended this and. Um, it will help with some of that backlog because you're right, there's a huge backlog. So Josh, do you mind checking in with Joe about what that is so we can update that here? Yeah, I absolutely. Okay. No worries. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate you you're teaching me a little here too. Okay. <clears throat> so um, this is uh, develop the planning districts. It says neighborhood plans for the districts, different areas of town, defining boundaries and identifying assets and challenges. We haven't um, had any initiative to really define what is a neighborhood. I know some neighborhood associations have loose boundaries, but the planning department doesn't have the, any of those. And it's the, all that we have are zoning districts on our zoning map. So and we have the business districts. Um, this would be a whole effort, I think. How do you define that? I'm not sure that that's on the radar screen of the planning department right now. So I've just left it all false um, for the time being. Yeah, um, for for that, um, we we talked at your last meeting about preparing a, a directory of the neighborhood associations to, to maybe sort of get a better handle on how how Milton divides itself and and how it sort of uh, defines its boundaries and I was able to get almost um, an almost complete list I think uh, as far as I as I can tell um, but uh, I, I was unable to find any um, contact information for um, the Brush Hill Road Area Neighborhood Association and the um, Milton Hill Neighborhood Association so. Any members have any contact with those associations? Um, I, I would appreciate um, their 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 contact information sent to me so I can get that directory up and running um, as part of this effort. Who would that be? That's the question. Roxanne. <laughs> oh no 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 not me. <laughs> well, you Tim. know who it would be for Brush Hill, don't you? Well, Tim. Sure, sure Tim Yeah. 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 Do you know who it is for Milton Hill? I, I don't. It's been four upside, but I'm not sure if he's in the list. I'm not sure. Um, I can go back and look through my emails from when we did Milton Village. It might be out of date, but I think we have something from then, Josh. So I'll look for you. Yeah, just those two, and then I, I may be missing neighborhood associations completely, but I've got a list of about 14 um, so far, so so that, I think that covers most of the areas of town that have had associations. Yeah, Regina's point earlier is that not all parts of town have associations. Precisely. And, uh, they vary quite a bit. I didn't even realize we had a Tucker Neighborhood Association. <laughs> yeah. So, so actually, maybe you could share the list. And they don't seem, some of them at least, don't seem very accessible if it's this hard to find information about them. Yeah, there is a list on Milton Scene for neighborhood associations. I don't know if you saw that, Josh. I, I did and, and got some of the contact info from there. Um, but but I think there's still some, you know, some that seem to exist solely for a particular project at a certain point in time. So it's it's certainly hard to to keep uh, keep abreast of, of the sort of activities. 
Okay. Elaine? Um, okay. Continue to implement sustainability measures to protect the environment. Uh, so I included the um, Sustainable Milton and is in process of working with the town um, to implement a climate action plan. I know there's okay. a lot more work being done, but this is another one that's a little bit redundant. Um, one thing, I, the, does anybody have a, a database or resources for residents who are interested in the state programs? Because there are a lot of programs available and it might be useful to have some database of information for residents. For what programs? Uh, like Mass Save. Um, it has programs, you know, they come out and they'll do an energy audit basically, and then they'll they'll provide improvements on that program. Yeah, so sustainable I'm I'm a board member on Sustainable Milton mm -hmm. and um, the website did have that. So so maybe that's something that can be a link then to Sustainable Milton on the town's website. Um, the town website actually has um, resources. Um, it's hosted at the um, on the DPW um, page, uh, but we have a page that that Mira and I created um, a couple of months ago, detailing um, sort of local energy and conservation initiatives as well as resources, um, including um, the the state um, sort of programs available to folks and, and the various sort of grant programs. That's great. One other update, um, I was able to get an answer on the, the one about the cemetery and they are in the process of renovating that house and it will be um, rented. So I added that to the notes. I think town meeting passed a, um, an article having a fund that those um, rental funds would go towards. Is that true, Roxanne? Am I remembering that correctly? It sounds familiar to me. Yeah, I think the funds go back to the cemetery, but I'm not certain about that. Like a revolving fund. Revolving fund, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any questions for Elaine on this one? Okay. Um, our zoning does not currently have requirements for sustainability and energy efficiency. It is something I think that we should look at. One of the things that's in the, or some of the bullet points though, that are under the actions here are facilitating preservation, including adaptive reuse of the many large older homes that could be repurposed and made more energy efficient and consider allowing conversion of large homes to multifamily subject to smart growth design and performance standards and promoting green new housing incentives and promote use of solar energy. So I would say the planning board hasn't taken any action on this. So I'm not sure where the truth the planning is. department has has put in some some effort to this though, uh, okay. thankfully. Cheryl, um, uh, we we were able to secure uh, sort of free to us technical assistance through a Department of Energy program that had a comprehensive review of our bylaws and identified places for um, advancing solar um, energy and, and solar installations. Um, so that zoning analysis um, was completed uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and provides a good background for uh, solar specific zoning because um, as, as many of you probably know, our, our sort of uh, energy efficiency um, and alternate energy um, that is codified in our zoning is tied to wind energy and not solar. That's how we comply with um, green communities. So there's, um, there's, there's work at the planning department level um, for trying to build in the analysis needed to see how we can incorporate uh, solar 
um, into our zoning on that front. So, so we've got that professional um, assistance done uh, just, just a few weeks ago. This also mentioned Listen, keeping uh, stretch code um, up to date. I mean, we are a stretch code community and the state- Doesn't that count though? Is this being a stretch code would not count towards, I mean, we don't have to be a stretch code community. Correct, yeah. So, so we have something here, yes. Yeah. And, and um, the new specialized stretch code will be, uh, it has just come out or is about to be um, sort of finalized. So that'll be something we'll be exploring as well. All right, which brings us to Okay, um, explore ways of using alternative sources of energy. Uh, facilities departments working on getting more electric charging stations, and the town is trying to buy electron, electric cars when possible. Well, we, have solar, we, have, we have solar panels on all the schools, right? That's true. Um, what about the energy, the electric aggregation? Mm -hmm. Isn't there, there's a one way you can sign up for 100% yeah. green versus 10%. Right. I forget the differences. Is that through the town table? Yes. Uh, so, oh. so yeah, that's the you have to opt out energy of it. aggregation. Right. Yeah. Uh, MiltonCEA.com, uh, I think is how you find it. Uh, Rock, uh, Regina, if you haven't seen it before. Um, but that's that's not managed by the town. It's managed by um, NextGen Solar. But uh, yeah, it's in the town. But the town uh, arranged to have those specific uh, classifications, and it, I think it's you're automatically in it unless you opt out, right? Yes. Yeah. I think you can opt in at a higher level too, right? Yeah, you you're automatically opting in at the the lowest level, I think, unless you change your listing. Yeah. All right, we good on that one. We're getting near the end. All right. Rex, oh, this is me. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lo local food production. Um, I mean, we're still fortunate to have uh, Brookwood Farm and um, the farmer's market. The We did assist the farmer's market in a we tried to anyway, until we told we weren't, we couldn't use our funds for this purpose, but at least I think we tried to bring some attention and assistance to the farmer's market. And in the planning work that we did in Milton Landing, we, um, we did include the farmer's market in our discussions and learned what their needs might be if, if there were some improvements made there. Um, so I would say to the extent we've been asked to participate, we have, but I'm not, sure that there's more that we've been asked for would need to do here. Although uh, um, there is, Josh, um, is there anything in zoning? Like, you know how um, some communities are doing more uh, to encourage more local food production? I don't know. Um, part of this has been, um, we, we just spoke with the, uh, with Rena today with the Mass in Motion uh, program. And so um, I know they're looking at some sort of community gardening and seeing what, what can be done to ex sort of expand um, local gardening capacity. Um, but there's, there's, there's nothing currently in the zoning that, that encourages that. Uh, as we look towards some um, low impact design standards um, and uh, things that's for you know, rainwater collection or, or green roofs that could be um, incorporated uh, on that front um, for, for greater local sort of self-sufficiency. Um, but there's nothing currently um, in, in the zoning. Okay. Should Cunningham uh, Park be listed as one of the partners? So the community gardens that are there? Yeah. Roxanne? A um, couple of things I was going to say with that is that um, we had the outdoor classrooms at all of the schools. 
and um, they were for growing flowers and things, but there was also talk about doing some fruits and vegetables and things like that. And I don't know if they're still doing that at the schools, um, but all of the schools had the capability of doing something like that. So that might be something to explore. Um, and as far as with um, the uh, health board, that grant is looking at um, food, food inequities. Um, and so Rita will, will get some information on that. And, you know, that's what all those communities are looking at. Okay, right, thank you. Deborah? So I just realized I didn't enter or make any of these changes, but um, continue to increase awareness regarding the need to protect the environment um, sustainable Milton first alternative energy committee, I think should be renamed to sustainable Milton. So I think they changed their name some time ago. Um, and they are working with the school department for, um, their, their biggest educational point that they are working on is composting. And, uh, they are doing that, um, and with the school department across the board, but they are also you know, pushing this, um, you know, at the elementary school level, I think Glover and Tucker are the uh, leads on that. Um, continue efforts to improve waste disposal practices and DPW has the trash cans that are the correct size and are a yearly fee for residents and they encourage recycling. And then they have the recycling days um, for the yard waste and things like that. Do we have a community composting site? I don't know if we do. I'm not sure about that. Do you yeah. know about that, Josh? Um, I don't. I don't believe so. Um, I, I haven't talked about it with Mara, um, but I, 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 I would. I would say no. Um, perhaps there's uh, at Cunningham Park, people are doing some sort of shared composting, but nothing at a sort of industrial scale or or intensity. Glover is doing it in their school for the parents, but I don't think it's. It's not advertised beyond the parents. Okay. I think it's an experimental one. And then the last one is a brownfield redevelopment plan. As far as I know, the brownfield, there's one property that in Milton's brownfield, which was a former mill property off of uh, Truman Highway. Uh, and that is, there is uh, brownfield zoning in place for that property. I don't know of any others. So that brings us to the end of our 121 lines here. Yay, we did it. <laughs> and it's 1019. Oh. So uh, we're not going to be able to finish. Uh, and I didn't think we would, but. I, but I, since I am invited tomorrow to the select board, it's on the agenda. I just did want to say that I'll give, have, uh, maybe the, 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 we can start with the three of us who have been at this for almost 10 years about what we think about whether we would, we think that we're making good progress on the plan, whether there's more to do and whether it should be updated and whether we should seek funding for it. Um, so I'm going to give Tabor and Dick the opportunity before me to, to think to give a few comments on that. I'll say uh, I think uh, as painful as this process is, it, there we are checking a lot of boxes, and I don't think it's just checking boxes for the sake of checking them, but it is it gives a sense of accomplishment on a number of these things. We're nowhere near where we need to be, but um, I do think that there are a few things that were in the master plan that we have accomplished and probably would not necessarily need to be included as uh, to-do items in the next master plan. I do think another master plan or an update of this plan is is, is necessary, but um, you know we're still 
two years away from that. And I do think, I don't know that necessarily 10 years has to be the uh, absolute cutoff, but uh, for us, you know, from, from, a, uh, from, from our standpoint as a committee, I think it makes a lot of sense to continue this uh, and to, uh, you know, make sure that we continue to move these things off of the, uh, uh, the list. Thanks, Tabor. How about you, Dick? And then going back to the beginning, I think a master plan is is, is necessary for any any city or town. You, you need to you need to put some put some thoughts on paper. And and what we have here really is just a compilation of a lot of thoughts from a lot of people through you know it seems to be you know over twenty meetings we had with residents of the town and who took the time to come to a meeting and actually articulated some of their thoughts and wants uh, for the town going forward. Um, it, it's very ambitious. And I think people, people have to understand that in terms of there's a lot in there. And, you know, as a, as a volunteer board, there's only really so much you can really accomplish. But I think I feel pretty good about, about at least what, we, what we've actually accomplished, but also what we're, what we're currently looking at. Some of it is gets away from a little bit of the nuts and bolts planning exercise. It gets into more of the socioeconomic um, and, and social issues in town, which I think is good. Um, but it's, as I said, there's a lot here, and I think we could, we could, you know, all of us who have been involved for for any length of time uh, should feel good about um, spending time on something like this, which I think only makes the town better. So, um, uh, you know, Tavis, Tavis did something that's interesting. You know, ten years. And, and I, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's 10 years or eight years or 12 years, but I think that there comes a time where, you, where we probably want to, you know, just stop, stop the wheel, so to speak, and go back and revisit some of the, some of the issues here and say, should they still be on, be in this master plan? But we'll leave that up to the people who want to participate in the, in the, uh, in the process. Now, this is an hour plan. This is, this is what the residents of the town um, giving giving their input, and all we're doing is, I think, what we're doing is we're taking their input and trying to find areas where we can uh, bring their thoughts to um, to to fruition and completion to some of the things that uh, they thought were they thought were important. So one of the, I I think uh, we have more progress that we can do in the next year, um, probably in implementing the plan. And I do think at the end of 10 years that our recommendation should be an update to the plan. I think enough has changed um, over time uh, that some things aren't addressed enough in this current plan. You know, there's sustainability, but um, you know, that has taken on a much more global impact now, you know, uh, climate change and uh, and what the communities with the state included is looking to do with trying to improve um, our emissions. And so I think that's something that we, we could take a deeper dive into in terms of you know, a, a community and whether the plan needs to, wants to look at that and what it might mean. I think on the housing front, um, you know, we obviously have state, some state um, mandates or legislation anyway the MBTA communities uh, law. And then we also had all these 40 Bs. And so what does that mean for what kind of housing we're going to have, what kind of housing needs we're going to have? Uh, we're getting a new memory care facility and an expansion at Winter Valley. So there's, you know, the, the, uh, the housing components I think are probably kind of out of date now or will be, uh, you know, in, in a couple of years by the time these are built. And, um, and then it would be good to hear from residents. You know, I'm sure the population has changed a little bit, and um, you know, it's good to get back out and see what people are thinking, uh, and have a, a, a true um, public engagement process. You know, I participated, like the three of us did, in that process before, and the consultant that was hired to do to lead the master plan process was selected based on the strength of their community outreach program. And so I think, um, you know, as we look forward, it would be important to engage the entire community in that. So, um, I mean, my suggestion about the briefing to the select board would be that we, uh, we've done a deep dive into all of these, that we think we need a little more time to, to kind of really assess where we are and, 
and what we think we want to focus on that our general idea is that we think we'll want to have it up the plan updated and that we should begin to think about what that cost might be. But for the next fiscal year that we would recommend the same level funding of 30,000. Um, does that seem like a reasonable uh, update to the select board for everyone? Yes, goes to me. Roxanne, to, is that to you as well? Sure. Elaine? Yes, that seems reasonable. All right. We'll pick up on this conversation again uh, at our next meeting in terms of if, if you all have a time to kind of go back and digest it all and think about, gee, you know, we looks like we really haven't made a lot of progress on this and you think we should focus some energy on it. That's what we want to talk about next. What, what are the things where we're really feel good about what things do we think we really need to turn some of our attention towards? And it really just might be trying more outreach, you know, um, helping the cemetery or helping somewhere else, like we're doing with the library. You know, we, um, like with the library, they, they did some outreach to us. You know, some others may not know to reach out to us. So uh, we wanna make sure we're keeping that uh, communication open. All right. Great, Thanks, so Paul. then I will seek a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Thank you, Roxanne. Second? I'll second that. All those in favor, Roxanne? Yes. Tabor? Yes. Dick? Yes. Elaine? Elaine, did you say yes? Yes. Uh, Regina? Yes. And Cheryl, yes. And Warren, we look forward to having you sworn in and voting with us at our next meeting. All right, good night, all. Night. 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 Night, everybody.